السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وطبيبنا وشفيعنا وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. الحمد لله we are blessed tonight to this evening to have one of the unique scholars Sheikh Salman al Nostad. He came all the way from Damascus, Syria. So we can all benefit from him. Now when Sheikh Salman for a long time was really myself amazed to see that there is people like him. May Allah protect them. If we take the, the side of the Sharia, we see that Sheikh Samer, I know he will not like what I'm saying, but I have to say it, this is a man. I studied with him in Ma'al Fatah in the Sharia program, and for 10 years I studied with him also in the private sessions. From all different knowledges, he talked about Quran, Hadith, Fiqah, anything, you name it. Anything you name it. He's a master of that science. And then, if you move from that to something that a lot of people now missing in this life, which is the Hafiqah. He's a master of the Hafiqah, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knowledge of Habibina al Mustafa. Now, adding these two together, you start to think perfection. But I can see there is two things added on this two shariat haqiqah that was really unique. The first one is a special love to Rasulullah For me, it has changed my life. The way that Sheikh Sahman knew about the Sirat Mustafa if you if you go any branch of the Sirah, you know all the relation to the Sirah. And out of love, out of respect, out of wanting to be one of them, the Sahaba of the Lord. So that's one side. The other side, which is also an amazing thing, is the Tawadah. That he always say I'm nothing. He always say I'm not Shaykh. And we all know that Sheikh Samuel is a it's a doctor graduated from the U.S. But with this level of knowledge, they always say I'm not Sheikh. And whoever in the Majlis, he goes to the any level of the people of the Majlis, and he will say, this is better than me. So this way of Tawadu, subhanAllah, may Allah give him rafa, inshaAllah. So, Sorry to take it long, but I feel I cannot give him his right, the level that it should be. Sheikh Samir, his day started before Fajr. He's the Imam of the Fajr in Damascus. Then four or five hours teaching Quran, for the Dan Qiraat. People, they come from all the old different places to get his Jesuit at the Dan Qiraat. And he opened his clinic as a doctor. Then he goes to the Ma'ad Fatah to teach in the Sharia program. Comes back to the clinic. In the evening, we are the people of Ahbab that we love. Said to Rabbi Sheikh Salman, we take him up like that until midnight. And every day like this. And one day we asked him here that Sheikh, we are doing too much on you, putting load. He said, here it's a vacation. Uh, Allah khair. Forgive me, Sidi, for this. But I, uh, may Allah open all the hearts to the dead from Shah Sahib. I will leave it to Sidi Shaykh Amin to
know him and his family, and increase him in knowledge, in Barakah, in his life, and in his family, inshallah. He is here to, inshallah, uh, take us through the path towards becoming an alim. What are the skill sets that we need in order to say that now we are al-ilm and we are spending knowledge that hopefully one day will allow us to be in the community as known as ulama. The ulama, as you heard, are a great speaker before. Don't ever say they are ulama, they are shiyukh. But there is a standard by which people in the community and other ulama refer to each other as ulama, meaning there's a standard and a criterion. What is that criterion? What is that standard that may have so that we know, uh, especially here in the US, that if somebody comes and says, I'm a sheriff, and I am this, I am that, then is there a way to evaluate that person according to the standard of the kabirin, the harshiyu, the mashayikh, who studied everything, as you just heard. Nowadays, there's a disease in the U.S. that you sit with somebody and you take the rewire of uh, Imam Nawi, is a Parbai, and then all of a sudden you're sheriff. So here we are, we want to dispel that myth in the minds of the community here in the U.S. especially, that it takes much more than a few years of study to say that you are now able to not only teach, but also uh, be in the community as a reliable and authentic person about whom others can say he's an artist and he's a chef. So, the Chandler Chef will expand upon some of the details of uh, which books to study, to study, which sciences to study, and which other disciplines one needs to study on the path towards becoming in the eyes of the community and Ali and the Sheikh with that I'll pass it on to our guest Sheikh Sadr Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillahi Lami Anzala Ala Abdik Al-Kitab Wa Lami Yaj'al Lahu Iwaja Qayyima Liyun Zira Ba'asan Shadeeda Min Ladun Wa Yubashira Al-Mu'minin Al-Ladina Ya'amadun Al-Salihat Anna Lahum Ajran Hasana Ma Kithina Fi Abadan Subhanaka Ya Rabbana La Nuhsi Thana Amalik Anta Kama Athayta Ala Nafsik Astaghfiruka Wa Natubu Ilayk اللهم صل وسلم على تسليم على سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمد السيد العلماء العالمين الذي قال انا اعلمكم بالله وانا اشدكم له خشيه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه الميامين واصحابه يوم الدين ومن تبعه باحسان الى يوم الدين وعنا معه برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وفقينا إذا علمتنا أما بعد في brothers and sisters I'm so happy to share some of these ideas with you and I really I mean I share because uh, many of these matters, you know, I need someone to guide me in, you know, and I would like to have someone else to have certain input, you know, in these matters, you know, because uh, all of us, as long as we are in this life, we look forward to have improvement in our uh, activity and you name it, you know. And that's why the Sufi, they said, whenever anyone declared that he reached his uh, destination, he, he reached to Saqar, he said. Saqar is one of the names of Jahan. And this is derived from the prophetic statement when he said, Man stawa yawmahu fa huwa maghmood. Whenever you feel that you yesterday and your today, they are the same, you are 
you have treated yourself unjustly, okay? Because the expectation to be better every day, you know, and to have some improvement, to have some development, you know. And this is, uh, as you may know, uh, when I relate them to myself, you know, I make to be regardless, not myself, anyone else, who, who, regardless how knowledgeable is he, how pious uh, is he, how is uh, how is he with Allah, how, uh, how is his relation with Allah, when he limited himself to, to, to that aspect, is going to be a miss a match, you know. And this is, if we want to broaden it much more, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by Al-Asr, which according to many scholars, Asr is not the time that we are at now, you know, afternoon, no, it's the time. Al-Asr in Arabic may mean a time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by a time in that insan that is a bankrupter or that is loser, except these who, who have these four uh, different descriptions, you know, Firstly, be believer, alhamdulillah, we have a lot of believers. Amilu salihat, good deeds, we have good deeds. But when, when I look personally, when I look at the last two descriptions, with the wasab bil haq or the wasab bil sab, I find in our communities this is almost dead, you know. You don't have anyone who has good practice about it. And this is what, what's the relation between time and this. This to tell you that your time is short in this life and you have a lot of responsibility, especially for those who are uh, in the, the position to, uh, to teach the others, you know. So you should have input and you should have benefit from the others, you know, to share all of these matters. And this is going to uh, <coughs> make your, your knowledge much more closer to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designated and make your knowledge much, much more accurate in that regard. And uh, if anyone will quit consultation, the first one who should quit it, you know, the Prophet sallallahu because he's the most knowledgeable one, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him in Quran, wa shawirhum fil am to consult, to, to consult his companion, you know, for, for certain matters. And uh, the, the uh, uh, governors or the khalifas after him وسلم, they used to have their people you know to consult with them uh, for many politic many religious and many other aspects you know in their life to be honest with you we need this yani, uh, i look uh, in a very admiring way to the scholars why because they are familiar with their life how to work in their life how to have their relation with them family, how to, have, how to uh, receive whenever they face any problem you know, or whatever, you know, ala basira. Yeah, this is, the, uh, it sounded as if uh, even uh, the same way you need uh, your sight or your gaze to look at certain matters which, which are physical, we need in our life as humankind in general, we need this other look or spiritual look to look at those matters that will not be measured in our scale by our eyes and that's why the ilm is going the knowledge is going to be significant portion you know and helping you know it's as such you know. besides this i'm not going to make my lecture you know only about the fada'il al-ilm or the preference of ilm or the specialty of ilm but we, we cannot help Without uh, our sin, without uh, remembering that Allah Allah Subhanahu wa described in another verse for Rasikhuna fil Ilm, and uh, the Prophet Sallallahu describes in the Mu'az of Jabal as the head of ulama, and you name <laughs> all of those. Uh, descriptions and uh, uh, titles given in different verses, you know, and different ahadith tells us that they tell us that we should look at ourselves. Okay, it's not a matter of title to say I'm a alim or not a alim. It's a matter of having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying you are a alim. Having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the acceptance you know, among the, uh, the people. And here, this differentiation starts from the Holy Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes certain people by saying, Ar-Rabbaniyuna wal-Ahbab. What's the difference between Ar-Rabbaniyuna wal-Ahbab? Ar-Rabbaniyun, those who are 
got the, the, those who, who got the maximum benefit of their knowledge and the, the expectation that we have, they are going to be beneficial for the other. Since he, he benefited himself, it's going to be much more beneficial for, for the other. Ahbar, they are maybe equal, better, or less than the, the, the first uh, item you know, in their knowledge, but they are not, they are like a carrier, you know, of knowledge, not, not anything beyond that point, you know. And when you look at it, when you don't get benefit of your knowledge, are you going to be called, called knowledgeable person? Allah Allah. The Prophet gave this example about some people, you know, those who convey knowledge to the others and they did not get the benefit of it as what? As the candle, when you have a candle, the old one, you have, that candle is going to burn itself just to make everyone, you know, uh, illuminate the road and the way for the others. You know. And this is really bad, you know, when someone, you know, vanished himself, you know, and uh, uh, did not take care of himself, you know, but he did take care of the others, you know, but this is really a problem. That's why I figured out, out for this uh, series of lectures, you know, to start, or let's say, firstly, to divide it, you know, to two aspects. The first aspect, I'm going to speak about the descriptions came to my mind that I look forward to to have them and I would like to have them in all scholars, okay? M many uh, of the, these uh, descriptions, they are spiritual, they may be character, uh, uh, characters, and some of them, they may be actions, okay? And these, they are applicable for everyone, regardless if you want to be specialized in Quran, Hadith, Fuqah, etc. Okay? The other one, inshallah, will try to go more materialistic, you know, by speaking about how to get them. You see, you see this, yani here, I, I would like to have the, the two ways or the two roads, you know, of knowledge. The first one, which inshallah will help us to be Rabbani, and the other one to make us among those ahbar, that means those who are really knowledgeable. And as you may know, we need both of them, especially in our time. Why? Why in our time? Because as I look, you know, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when we speak about the companions who are famous about Quran, companions famous about the nation of Hadith, companions famous about Quran, companions that are mentioned in Tasawwuf, you are going to find them the same names repeated, okay? In another, another way, those who are specialized in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, that this might look, I, I may be right or wrong, they used to be specialized in all aspects of, on, and in all fields. Then you feel when you go one generation further down or whatever, they are not exactly our ourselves now, nowadays, but you feel the difference. You start feeling the specialty. Then when you go one, one uh, generation further, we are going to find the difference more till we reach, reach our time. I'm sorry to tell that we reach our time and we have everyone looked at the other as some other sections. Even, even some people, they may include this as or look at them as, as one of those 73 sections that mentioned by the Prophet which for me it's really bad, okay? And here I see the specialty of those who uh, insist a lot you know, on their spiritual matter and the specialties of the other people, you know. And I look forward to have people, you know, who combine these two specialties to other, uh, together. And this is, was not the problem of our, of our time. Imam Ghazali and a famous scholar 100 years after him, both of them they highlighted and, uh, and uh, take the, uh, uh, the statement of the other scholar, he said, Listen to this, you know, and be careful about it. Not because you want to criticize the other, because you need it for yourself. He said in our time, which was, and he passed away 638, that means how many centuries ago, nine centuries or so, just, just to get your benefit. He said in our time, in his time, to have someone combine 
فقه اهل الحديث وجزاء تسريف If he is going to, to combine to them the sawwa, speaking about Islam, this is, is going to be much more rare than the red sulfur. Imam Ghazali has some comment similar to this. What does, does this tell me? Okay, that to have this combination is not easy. I'm going to be sorry with you. Perhaps not only everyone in the hall is going to be as such. But a person like with me, when I know this fact, whenever I see a person who is more skillful than me, in rather than making myself sheikh and I have met with shuyukh and this and that, I should sit down and try to listen to him, okay? Because as long as I'm in this life, Things may be changed for me. I may have some improvement. Inshallah, this is my good thought about Allah. The other may be have mal improvement that may to go the, in the opposite way. They will go down. They lose some of their skills or some of their special knowledge. So whenever you have something like this, if you feel yourself that you are scholar, you are not going to put yourself down. And this is the main problem. I hear this from one of our shiuks, Muhammad Zukr, he mentioned about a famous sheikh called Sheikh Abdullah Abdul Suzayt in Damascus, that they told him, Sheikh so and so, he wants to come and fix his fatha tajweed wise by you. He said he will not come. Why? Because you called him Sheikh. Okay, whenever you call someone Sheikh, that means he finished everything, you know, and there's nothing to add. Well, when he wants to come, you know, and uh, learn Fatiha, he should be not Sheikh. Okay, come as an ordinary man and please help me in reciting Fatiha. Okay, which is the first, يعني, and the most simple way, you know, of uh, 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 learning taj Tajweed, you know, in Tajweed classes, you know, yet. You should put yourself down. And this is what has been summarized by Sayyidina Hawar Khattab. He said, تَفَقَّهُ قَبْلَ أَن تُسَوَّلُ Okay? Yeah, you try to enrich your knowledge the best you can before you are put in your society or community as a certain figure. And this is very important point. Even if you are put in your community as such, Remember your deficiencies all the time and try to get more and build up what you have, you know, in your, in your knowledge, in your heart, in your mind, and you name it, okay? And this is, is going to be applicable all the time without exception. And when you look at it, you know, some of us, yeah, I told this story to some people, they would not understand it very well, okay? Listen to this story. This story. They want Imam Nafi. Who is Imam Nafi? One of the seven most famous recitals of the Quran of the whole nation of the Prophet. We are not speaking about time, we are not speaking about city. One of the best seven recitals of the Quran of the whole nation of the Prophet. That's what we know. We cannot be sure about it, but that's what we know. We will we, say Al Quran is Sabah, but that, uh, among them will come Nafi. They ask him, please. We want you to lead the prayer in Taraweeh, in the Holy Mosque, the, the Mosque of the Prophet. He said, oh, yeah, for sure I'm not going to lead the prayer. I am the one that is. No, no. Well, he went and consulted who? Imam Malik. Imam Malik is not, يعني, in our uh, knowledge, we don't know him as a uh, famous reciter of Quran. Okay, but we know him as very knowledgeable person. So he consulted him. This is was offered to me. Should I accept it or not? What did Imam Malik say? He said, no, don't accept it. Why? He said, because you are very famous when you know the Quran. And this is the holy mosque of the Prophet. You have strangers all the time, they may come. And the Quran, there's a possibility that you'll have mistake, you know, in one wording, you know, in one pronunciation, or you name it. Those strangers, they are going to take it and go back 
to their country, you know, say, Imam Nakas recited like this, okay? This is the most accurate way. You got this point? And here, even though Imam Nafi was toward the end of his life, he lived almost 100 years or 99 years, okay? And he uh, was one of the most famous reference, you know, in Qiraat. Even the student of his shuk, they used to come and read on him. Yet, when he was offered this matter, you know, which may be felt, you know, as very honorable position for many of us, he listened to the consultation of Imam Malik. This for me, what does it mean? It means that this person, he doesn't care about himself. He cares about Quran much more, okay? If he is going to care about himself, this is the most joyable time for him to stand, you know, in the bihrab there, you know, and recite Quran over Ramadan. He's going to have much more tajalli, much more happiness, much more cheering up, you know, and you name it than any of us, okay. But on the other hand, is this matter good for the Quran? He felt that it's not good for the Quran. Since I give preference to Quran on myself, I'm not going to accept. You got this point? And this is, here, if I want to rephrase it for the audience, because they, they, they told me that you are ulama, mashallah, okay? If I want to rephrase it, if you are ulama, the way I'm going to look at you, the community, they will, the way they are going to look at you, and even the non-Muslim people, when they are going to look at you as well, as people not speaking in their behalf. They are speaking about Allah. And this is for you, hold a significant responsibility, okay? When I ask you, I don't want you to tell me about your taste, you know, or your opinion, or this or that. I want you to tell me about the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this particular message, okay? If I ask you about Quran, for sure I don't want you to put a word, you know, instead another, of another word, you know, in the Quran. When I ask you about hadith, again, I don't want you to, to fake, you know, and have some other hadith or whatever. When I ask you about fuqah, for sure the same thing, okay? And this one of the main problems uh, of the Salafi being wrong, why they are wrong? Because they thought that Abu Hanifa, Shafi, Malik, Ahmad, they just have some joy, uh, happy time, enjoyment, you know, in their time. No! The, these people, you know, they, they will spend the whole time of their life just to know what is the best answer. They are going to give the people according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. Namely, the Holy Quran and Sunnah. And that's why you read in the Sul Fuqah that these are the essentials, you know, of the Sul Fuqah, uh, the Holy Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the tradition of the Prophet. So here, if I want to put it that as a first point, this is the first and most important point. Whenever you are asked to speak, now you are not on your behalf. They are not asking so and so. They want to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants in this matter. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regulates for them. Okay? And this is very important. For the non-Muslim, they are going to show to see Islam through you. Okay? The way you are, uh, of your behavior, they will feel that this is Islam. You may be, to one extent or another, you know, precise, you know, in showing the picture of Islam, and you may, uh, some of other people, inshallah, not an, any of the audience, they will be exactly opposite of it. Okay? And by this, they are going to be wrong idea about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wrong idea about the Islam, wrong idea about the Quran, wrong idea about the Prophet okay? And this is very important point, okay? Here, when you choose this way, you are, your life doesn't belong to you. Your spell, your talk, doesn't, your behavior, your action, and you name it. All of those things, whether you like it or not, they are going to be looked at from the others, as this is the, w the way religiously I should go. This is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designated for us. And this reminded me, you know, of a story. I'm, I'm sorry, I bring a lot of stories just to help myself, you know, because I'm not that good, you know, in theology and give theories or whatever, you know. But 
this story, I know it, I heard it from that sheikh, a sheikh in, back in some cities in Syria, Rahimallah Ta'ala. He was, to be honest with you, he was poor one. He's not rich, he doesn't have a lot of money on his hand. When he wants to move from one area to another, and he has some vehicle, you know, to take himself and, and his things, you know, to the other. He said, I gave that driver more than what we have as a deal. Not to let anyone think that the shuyukh usually they try to take away some of the money. He gave him extra, okay, to make the picture of shuyukh for that particular person. That the people that the Shiu, they are not the people who just try to get money from this person and try to in a hidden way or do this or this or no, he gave him extra just to, even though that person I know him very well, you know, he's not that rich person. You know? And when he is going to pay this amount of money, it, uh, for sure, it's, it's, and you see what I'm trying to say, and he paid some of his own money to do what? To make the picture not of himself, of the shuyukh, more accepted by people. people. And this is you take it from what the Prophet said. The Prophet commanded everyone, and I see it much more applicable to the uh, scholars, you know. Habibu ibadallahi okay. One of your main tasks to make the people of Allah loves Allah much more. Okay? Some of the shuyu, I'm sorry to tell you, make Allah subhanahu wa hate it. Okay? And the others, they make him much more. Okay? In the same pattern, you should make them love their religion, you should make them love your, uh, their uh, prophet and your name. If this is the case for everyone, I see it much more important for the people here in this country. Why? Correct me if I'm wrong. You have a lot of competition. Even among the Muslim children, when you offer them something, you know, you know for sure that the other they have much better way, you know, of offering other matters. And this is your task. You are in a competitive setting, you know, which is not Perhaps just for you, because uh, I, I fully understand you are limited in your activities, in your energy, in your uh, financial, financially, and you name it, you know, but you don't have any other choice. You should work hard to gain this competition, you know, by attracting people to your side. Okay? And if if you are successful, that's it. If you are not successful, whereas will be blamed by this, by the society. And this is the way. And let's be thorough and open to each other. The parents and the other, they are going to be. Right or wrong? Yes, they are going to. So here, if this is the case, you are going to feel really bad. What's about if the one who is going to blame you is Allah? They are up. You are a smart person, you are knowledgeable, I made everything available for you. Then, what's about my people? You did not bring them with you. Where, where are they? I, I see, it. I don't have solid proof about this, you know, but I see exactly as the Prophet Sulaiman described that person. That person, he was described by the Prophet, he was shown up to Allah the <coughs> year after. He said, also, and so, did not I give you a lot of money? Not I make you healthy and quite strong and give you children and give you this and that. Where are they? Where are what, 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 what the name of where are they? Have you thanked me? Have you prayed to me? Have you did this? so? What did he say? He took it from the materialistic matter. Oh Allah, I left them at the best position. Let me go back and bring them to you. Five all up. But my friend is not advising so much. Again, here, when you, myself or yourself, you are exposed to certain children or certain people or whatever, and you came to Allah, I may expect, again, I don't have solid evidence, I may be, 
asked by Allah, how did you come to Adonai? Where are these people? Okay? And this, this reminded me now, I just remember it in the Quran. When Sayyidina Musa out of his yearness, you know, yearning to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَمَا عَجَلَكَ عَنْ قَوْمِكَ عَنْ قَوْمِكَ يَا مُوسَى قَالَ لَهُمْ أُولَاءِ عَلَىٰ أَزَلِ وَأَعْشِرُ فِي لَيْكَ رَوْمِ I hear all of us this is a favor for Allah given to us to make to enable us to sit with someone and tell him about Allah tell him about the message tell him about Islamic regulation tell him about fuqa tell him about this tell him about that okay but this is the end of the story? No, I look at it at the beginning of the story. And you may be asked, where are these people? Have you brought them with you? Okay? You should, you should. Yeah. And, and this is mentioned in the Quran. يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَا بِهِمْ Okay. Let's take it, يعني, I'm not here with, with giving you interpretation of the Quran. But we say Imam. This is Imam. Okay. This Imam is going to be asked, you know, where are your people, you know? Have you brought your people, people with you or not? Okay. And this is just to make everyone attracted in the way, not to be attracted themselves or to be smart or this or No, to bring people to Allah. As I said, we have a lot of competition and you should work hard. And here, I look at this job that you are doing. It's not like any other job when you have certain hours you know, to work. And then you get tired, you know, and go back to, uh, to, to your house, okay? I'm going to give, give you an example. I had to give this example, you know, but it may mean something. Being physician myself, you know, when I used to be in U.S., in the community you find, I don't know, I think it's the case up to now. In the community you find many of those active physicians who are quite rich. When we have the chance to go to one of those university hospitals, which are one of the top, you know, uh, institute, medical institute here in the U.S., you found there a people, you know, who are really rich in their knowledge. Really, you would, you would like medically to try to collect everything with them. And those people that are not rich, and they spend a lot of hours in their lab, you know, or in their hospital, you know. And I imagine many of them, when you return back, they dream about what they have done, you know, in the morning. And here, if I want to match this with your case, this is your case. No, you are in much honorable position. If these people, they are responsible for the body of humankind, who are responsible for the humankind in general, the humankind, the way Allah subhanahu wa wants him to be. Okay, and by this way, I don't look at your uh, task or your job as that you spend a few hours and you go back home. No, you should spend much more time. You should have a lot of effort, you know, and you, you should connect yourself spiritually to this matter, thinking it's a good way, you know, of thinking that this is the best, best position ever given to any human come. But you may be one of these best, you know, or you may not be. Okay, according to how we are going to uh, deal with this matter. And this is يعني, one of those people who was exposed to them badly, I say, the Prophet. When he was sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in Medina, he is surrounded by a lot of knowledgeable people. They said, One of them, Abdullah bin Salam, gave full submission to the Prophet. The others, some of them may be more knowledgeable than Abdullah bin Salam. They said, no, you are nothing. Okay. And the Prophet gave this statement. See how, يعني, it is painful for me, this statement. He said, if 10 of those Ahbar, they will be, believe in me, the whole Jewish people, they Here you have a person supported from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in revelation and other matter, 
surrounded by some people call themselves you know, ulama or ahbab or knowledgeable people of what they do, and they have this bad reaction toward the Prophet And this is going to be repeated. And I, I, I should tell you about this example. Why? Because I should warn you, myself and you, your people, that be careful not to be one of these people. Okay? These are ulama. So these are the people that make the case worse. These are the people that uh, Imam Abu Hanifa said, make hajar on them, okay? And in, according to Imam Abu Hanifa, there's no hajar. Even if you have a person, you know, waste his money, he's not going to make hajar, according, opposite to his companion, you know? He said, I only make hajar on three types of people. The physician, the half physi physician, that he learned some issues, you know, in medicine, and it's not good, that good. <laughs> and al mufti al-jahil. What's the meaning of Mufti al-Jahil? Let me translate it according to our time. Those who speak about Allah, I'm not, I'm not here speaking about Fakr, those who speak about Allah in an ignorant way. Why? Because the first one is going to be, be significantly harmful to the body of the human person, and the second one is going to be significantly harmful to the religion of that person which is much more important, okay? Then he spoke about money, okay? And what he put as is the three more important items, religion, body, and money, okay? And among these, as you may know, the most important one is the religion, okay? So here, if I want to simplify it, you are the one who is going to fix the other Fix, yes, fix. Why? Because nowadays, I believe, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, we are in the time the Prophet said, the person will be believer in the morning and going to be non believer in the evening. Because he sold his religion. Okay. And by this, yes, you are the one, you are the fixer, you know, of the religion of people. Okay. We, uh, I'm sorry to tell, as Muslim, we don't have a lot of resources, you know, of those matters, you know, but we are one of the main resources that we have to fix, in our, especially in such a setting when uh, the parents, you know, and the other, they are going to look forward that you are going to be the one who may be choosing religious or anything. Sorry, I could make the introduction too, too long, you know, but I think it's important, you know, and just think about it, you know, and we are in a time, all of us, without exception, even the ordinary of the book, it's not that educated, you know, he had he hold a lot of responsibility in that regard. After that, I may go to those points, these points, you know, that I have highlighted, you know, I, I, I cannot say that I, Covered all of these matters, and these are important for all aspects, without, regardless what what uh, branch or what subject you know of Islam you want to go at. You know, you need them for all aspects of it. Okay, and these are general common criterion for anyone to become alim. Okay, then we'll go by the specialized one. You know how to. I, I look at this more. Even though not necessary to be the case, they are much more spiritual, and I look at the other as much more as physical activity. Okay, and the, the other one, they are a matter of time factor. You know, whatever you spend time, you are going to gain and build more. more okay, what's the difference? You know, we have difference in, in, in intelligence. We have difference in many aspects. Difference in free free time. Uh, difference in circumstances, you know, and setting, you know, uh, given to each of all, all of us. Whereas the first one, for me, it sounds much more tougher, you know, and much more difficult. Let's assume, I'm not speaking about any of you or all. Let's assume you have one of the worst characters ever person, you know, Muslim. He came and became teacher, you know, in this place. Do you expect this person, <coughs> this person within a few days is going to, all of a sudden is going to change all of his character? No. 
He is entitled to do this. But this is going to take long time. It's going to take hard time. He may be successful occasionally, and he's going to be, yeah, to fail frequently. <coughs> يريد البخاري ولو أن أربعين نووية a person seek an advice from the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم I imagine that person I don't know if I write or wrong he only perhaps he has this chance you know or this one of the rare chances you know to meet with the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم I'm going to ask him you know to to give me an advice but you read with the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم ask for advice what did the Prophet say? He said that I'm wrong. Look at Oh my God, you know, I, I prepared myself, I traveled, I did so and so to come and be told, don't, يعني, he, he did not find it, you know, as the important word to, to receive, you know, after all of this long preparation that he had. He asked again, Kabbalah Mira. Said that Allah. Another three times, four times, five, six times, I don't know how many times. Kabbal and Mirara. And the Prophet kept saying that. What does this, does this mean? This means for me that that person, regardless if he's teacher or not, you know, he, one of the major negative character in his uh, body that is going to ruin, ruin many other good matters in him is Allah. And here, why did I bring it? Because these items that I bought, I feel they are a must for those who are ulama and scholars. But don't imagine for one moment of time that all scholars they have. It, okay? Some they may have, some may have, may not. And in this life, out of my experience, most of these scholars, you know, and the others, they are going to have some and not having some. And by this, you should be familiar with yourself, what you have out there, and try to find a way to gain those who are missing, you know, in your character. You know. And this is very important. So I start by the first one, the ikhlas. Okay? As you may expect, you know, as in Islam, anything, the first point that you should have is an ikhlas, sincerity. My friend, time is not over. I mean, even if you, you attended this, now I'm sorry to tell you, perhaps it's not the case of any of you, but it's the case of many people like you. Let me be more so. Nowadays, boys and girls you know, in general, those who are in the school, they are interested in something that going to leave a lot of money. When they don't have the chance to do this, they go to Islamic knowledge. This is the case in our country. Okay? They go to Islamic knowledge. Which is, يعني, here, the way I look at it, a significant gap between the honor of that position and the way the people they do that. So, you may find, you know, among these people, many of them, they don't have even intention, you know, to come to this. But this was the only available position for them. This is the only successful one that was, was given to them. And that's why. And if you are going to be, give these people, you know, an offer, you know, of something better than this, they are going to leave it behind, you know, and go to the other one. You got my point? Let's be critics, you know, of ourselves. You know. I'm not telling all of you you are as such, you know. But many of these people that I know, they, they are going to be as such. Okay? So here, why did I say time is not over? Because yet you still have plenty of time to redirect your purpose and make it to the field. But what I would like from myself, when I say it's sincerity or ikhlas to Allah. This is the way I look at it, okay? 
I may be successful sometimes to do it, <coughs> I may be complete failure to do it other times. That's me. Whenever you are in a position, and this is, may happen to all of you, you have contradiction. This is the problem. When, whenever you have contradiction, you have, when the things go together, you know, you don't have a lot of problems. When they contradict with each other, you are going to find a problem. So here, if you have a position that one of your benefit or advantages or time to spend with the family or this contradict with delivering science, you know, or delivering knowledge to the other. If you really, uh, all of us we are going to say we are sincere and we are servant of Allah. But here is going to be sh showed really if we are sincere or not, okay? And if we are sincere, I'm going to bypass the need of the family or the, being having some headache, you know, or being not feeling well, you know, and I may tolerate it, you know, and give the other one. Don't imagine that this is easy, okay? Yeah, I, I'm going to give you an example from some other type of people. In the generation perhaps above us and our generation. Alhamdulillah, we used to have back in Syria, you know, those who are religious, you know, they will gain the highest grades, you know, in the high school. And there we have competition because the universities, they are yani, ran by the government and they are going according to the grade with the people in it, okay? And many of these religious people, they will enter medical school. When you ask them why, because we are going to serve Muslims. We are going to be uh, work for Allah. We, for the sake of Allah, we are going to do this. To be honest with you, I'm sorry to tell you. I know many of these people, they are left here in the U.S. Serving the non-Muslim. Earning a lot of money, okay? And the Muslim, the miserable Muslim, you know, back in the country. Now we hardly find any good physician, you know, to go at. You see this point? And here, what I'm trying to say, it's too easy to say, I work for Allah. This is, I have the, the, uh, the, the niyyah, the intention, you know, toward Allah or whatever. But when you look at the reality in this life, you are not going to find the case in the you got my point? Okay. I'm not here to judge anyone. Even I don't have the ability to judge these people. Uh, anyone, he may have excuse, he may have this one, uh, but I give you an example of my mind, my limited mind. How do I look at it? Okay. Please, I don't want any of you to give the preference of his rest or his benefit or his few, uh, small amount of money or this or that. Over And we should remind ourselves, and this is going to touch my heart a lot, you know. we should remind ourselves about our Prophet. For sure he was given a task, was not given to any of us. But he sacrificed a lot. Whether I understand it or not, for sure it is for the sake of he sacrificed his life, he sacrificed his faith, he sacrificed his family, he sacrificed his country, and you name it. Okay? Can anyone say no? No, we cannot say no. He used to be most famous when he used to be called the most truthful, the most trusted one. Then he called it him magician, crazy, uh, liar, and you name it, right? right? Yes? Being physician, I know, because of the ball cutting, you know. Sayyidah Khadija was old woman, you know, and she, she was not able to tolerate it, and she passed away a few days after the boy cut was lifted up. And in my mind, I cannot help it, you know, thinking that she passed away, for sure, everything by the dignity of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the strongest person you know, to believe in this, you know. But in my mind, I cannot detach that, that this fact. We have Sayyidah Zainab, you know, his daughter, you know, uh, when she 
was terrified by one of those people, you know, and keep bleeding, you know, over the years, and she passed away out of that bleeding. She passed away. Okay? This is the way I go. So he sacrificed that. He used to divide his time, you know, to three times. One time for Allah, one time for the people, and one time for himself. What would such a person like him, you know, when he had a lot of busy matters, you know, the time of the people may not be enough. For where is going to sacrifice? To be honest with you, myself, I'm going to sacrifice the time of Allah. Oh Allah, you do whatever you want to do. I'm going to sacrifice your time. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not do it. He used to sacrifice his own time. His special time. His resting time. Sacrifice it to, for, for the others. When you look at this, Really, I feel ashamed of myself. I may be good, I may be bad sometimes, you know. When someone asks me, I want to recite the Quran, I want to do this or that, you know. At this time, I may be exhausted. You know? I'm going to hate myself if I said yes, if I said no to that person. Why? Because I'm going right away to remember the Prophet. What do they do? You'll be completely tired? Then. When someone comes, right away you go to him and try to uh, educate him and try to do this and that. And uh, I see, I don't know if you have the same look, you know, I see that I wasted the sacrifice of the Prophet I did not do it. Okay. So here, uh, let's uh, not uh, go deeply or uh, keep talking about it. Sincerity is, in my view, it's very easy to be said. Okay. Even though it's not a matter of speech, talking about it, it's a matter of inner matter, or your heart, okay? And uh, uh, even the fuqaha, they say, what did they say? What did they say? They say, they said that, if you said, I'm going to pray, verbally you said, you know, you made me before, I'm going to pray of Asr, at the time of Asr. And the uh, in your heart, you mean zuhur. Is this prayer accepted? Okay, no, it's not accepted. Even though you said asr, why? Because in your heart, that this is the, the zuhur prayer time. You got my point? Yani, when I want to apply this is fuqah mas'ala to this sincerity mas'ala, Regardless of what do I say about my sincerity, it's not going to be valid if I have in, heart, in the heart something else to occupy my heart. You got my point? And that's why I don't, I don't like to hear the answer from any of you, but just I tell myself and your people, prepare the answer to Allah. Okay? If he said, why you did not accept that person? Why you did not sincerely, you know, give him your time? Why you did you see? Just prepare the answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You may, may be you may be completely right, you know. You may have some excuse, you may have this, you may have that. All of us we have a lot of excuses, not one or, or two. Okay, well, alhamdulillah, I'm not going to be too tough, you know, on you. Uh, as the Prophet said, no one loves excuses like Allah. Even if you may give him some silly excuse, he may accept it, you know, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though the human can, they don't accept such, such excuses. That's what the Prophet says. Okay, again, what I'm trying to say about sincerity, okay, it's not a matter of what we, we speak about. It's a matter of your behavior, how do you behave in this matter. Do you give preference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala matters or other matters? That, this leads us to the second point that I, since you have this honorable matter, you should be tired. You should show that you don't have good time. Okay. And this is again when we want to relate it to the Prophet. You hardly find in his time, you know, that there's an easy days came on him. 
when the, it started to ease up, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Had this time to go. That's it. Okay. After him, Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, when, when, when Hadith said Aisha described what happened to her father, she said, if those matters that they affected my father, they, if they are up on the mountain, they are going to put them down. And here, being in this honorable position, I don't look at it only from the honorable side or whatever. No, I look at it from the duty side. And this is mentioned by many scholars. Whenever you have the Sharif, you have the Khif, okay? And here, you have the honorable matter. Usually, Allah subhanahu is absolute. He may make it otherwise. It's going to join with what? It's the Khif. Okay, that's mean you are responsible. You are going to be in very unique and honorable position in the hereafter, but you should work hard for it. You should be, be uh, tired for it. You should, okay, and you may not get the money the others they get when they get tired, you know, but if you know that you are, you work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you seek to have the result from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the two points that Shall we stop for Maghrib time now? Okay, we'll stop. Inshallah, we'll carry on. If you uh, like this pattern, if you want to go faster or slower, you know, or whatever, or, or and I don't know how to, uh, that for the question we are going to ask, and if you have some questions, you know, Inshallah, uh, Sayyidi Amin will tell us, you know, how to do it, you know, and to what time we go this, uh, this evening. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala. very good sign or very bad sign. That's when everyone understood everything or everyone did not understand anything. I don't have that like a special like question, but I'm gonna ask about if you can uh, like speak Arabic more than English, so you can uh, get from your belly. I did not get you. Uh, shall we have what? أنا أنا أتكلم عن هل يمكنك أن تتكلم باللغة العربية أكثر من الإنجليزية؟ لا أنا نريد العربية أكثر من. That's what I was told, you know. Then when I did see everyone who speak in English, I thought I should show myself, you know, show the other, you know, that I but speaker in English, you know, which is not the case. It's up to Sheikh Amin, I don't know. This will be, I think, much easier for me, but it's not my decision, you know. I'm sorry. I was told initially that I should speak in Arabic. Then, when I found out that everyone speak in English, I thought perhaps I misunderstood something. أباك أوكي قاعد. لا أتكلم عن نفسي أنا بنت الناس هي في هذه القاعة كلهم يتكلمون الإنجليزية في طلاقة يعني ما شاء الله لكن هم أكثر تعطش للغة العربية من الإنجليزية لذلك إذا تكلمت لهم بالعربية يمكن أن يأخذوا هذه الكلمات يستفيدون منها هل هذه وجهة نظري والله أعلم. I leave it for Sheikh Amin he will decide. This is suggestion not question. Okay, I'm sorry. We have a question from the woman's side. When Imam Nafi refused the position, did someone else less qualified lead the prayer? 
what do you think for sure yes yani uh, let me be more broad you know about this you know whenever you have anything left for the one who is eligible for it you are going to find a lot of competition from the others and someone may say to whom I'm going to leave it you know if I'm going to do so okay this is I look at it as deceptive way from the shaitan come to us okay don't worry about yourself even much much more greater than our people nowadays they passed away and the life kept running you know after them. it's not going to stop okay and you are going to find someone else to hold this position i think i don't know yani, the real answer but i think yes this eligible person who took it he took over some of you may, may feel bad about it you know but imam nafi felt very good about it and i'm going to be as such why why because and here when you have less qualified person firstly the quran is not going to be conveyed that this is mentioned by man nafi okay when you mention someone else and i don't i have to give this example even here in us you have they said these are the 10 top universities and these are the least 10 universities this is the way they used to speak you know when i was here in us okay and when you have something coming from the one who is not qualified you are not going to take it for sure by the, the way it's came it came from the qualified one okay yani here you said the quran through nafi when you have this qualified person you know even the, though he may have some mistake in quran someone may, may convey this mistake to his country or whatever it's not going to be as bad as when they related to imam nafi this is my view about it No, um, you mentioned a lot of the class, and I heard uh, so one of my scholars in, uh, in Lebanon, he actually gave me an advice. If you're not perceived or become like a, go into religion, make sure you have two things, a class and a So, but from your, from your talk, you mentioned more not to be a uh, in one thing, but to be, to like, have this holistic, uh, if you say education. So can you elaborate more about this uh, a part? We have one of these items that I'm going to mention about it. You know, inshallah, we'll answer your question through that point that I have written after it. The next point that we should have, what we call it in Arabic, التحقيق, or to be precise and to know the fact behind it, okay? This is a very important point. To be honest, honest with you, out of my experience, I'm not pleased with many of the no edition of many books, you know. You may have someone who get, he, he get doctorship, you know, being doctor, you know, because he made tahqiq of that particular book. I will not be pleased with that book at all, at all. I may give you some example, but here, firstly, how to be muhaqqiq, okay? The name muhaqqiq, we are here to live, okay? We have two famous scholars, you know, they were called muhaqqiq. And this is one in riwayah transmission and the other one in dirayah, understanding, okay? So here, I think you may learn a lot, you know, I may learn, learn a lot, you know, from these people. The first one was called Muhaqqiq ibn al-Jazari, it's called Muhaqqiq in transmission, okay? And whenever you are interested in transmission, one of the good way of making tahqir is, is to learn from the, from the book of Ibn al-Jazali, namely al nashr okay. The other one called Muhaqqiq ibn al-Humam al al-Hanafi, even if you are not Hanafi. If you want to learn Tahqiq, 
you go. Yani he, I'm reading now in the Numa with some people, you know. I imagine up to now I don't have, you know, if I have a school and student, I come to, going to read these texts, you know, of Ibn Huma to them, to teach them how to make tahqiq, okay? It's very important. I'm sorry to tell you, out of my experience, I found that, you know, it's too rare in our time, and in the other hand, I find that, you know, it's too important, okay? Namely, when you have a name, Rather than, yani in, in the narration, let's say in Bukhari, on, uh, not in Bukhari, it's a very famous book, let's say in Musallaf Abdullah, we found it. Rather than to have a large margin there to speak about this is possibility and the other possibility and this and that and this copy and that copy, easily you go to the books of names and find out what's the accurate name of that person and fix it there. You got my point? And yani you have in... Uh, in Islamic and Arabic library, we have many, many of those large hawashi. I look at them of no need. Okay? When you make the haqiq, you may take them away. Okay? You may mention that in this copy, this name was mentioned as such, <coughs> but I look at it as too easy. Okay? In Quran, Quran, you should be precise about it. There's no possibility. If you have possibilities in uh, Fuqa, we don't have possibility in Quran. I, I give you an example, you know, about my pain here in Quran. What is the most famous book, you know, as a reference for Qira'a? Anyone knows? Which is used by most of those deen with Qira'a nowadays. Hafz al-Amani. Hafz al-Amani, no. It's al budur al zahifa This is the most book used by people, you know. They are going to yani, make it as a bread for you, for them, you know, and they cannot even tell you about anything without checking in, in that particular book. To tell you about my story with that book, I have the first edition of that book. It was printed in Egypt. There's some few areas of wrong wording and they have a table at the end of the book to tell you about these wrong areas. They reprint, they printed that book, you know, and I'm sorry, with much more nice pages, you know, and white one and you name it and much more uh, uh, out looking and whatever and they took away this. What does this mean? It means that the wrong statements, they were left there. For sure, I know they are not from the author because he's quite knowledgeable, you know. This is from the printing, okay? Yani this is just to give you a, an example how the book may look very nice from outside and no, no tahqiq. Okay? I give you another example. I have a long story with tahqiq, you know, and this is one of the main things that I would like everyone, you know, to be muhaqqiq in that matter. Before going to that story, I give you an example about it. When you read tafsir, you may have the mufassir saying about the opinion of Abu Hanifa and Shafi'i and Malik, okay? In many cases, you are going to find it wrong. When you have another book of tafsir or another book of interpreting hadith, you know, he may speak about qiraat, what did Nafi' recite? Again, in many times you are going to find it wrong. You see? He, why? Because that person did not make tahqiq. He heard something, you know, and put it in his book. Yani I should mention that one of those good at it by making it precisely as it should be, Fath al-Bari. Fath al-Bari, Ibn Hajar, really when he says this is Khira al-Nafi', you are going to find in most cases or all cases this is Khira al-Nafi'. When he say, say this is opinion of, you see this point? Yani what I'm trying to say, as a teacher, don't take the opinion of Abu Hanifa from Book of Tafsir. Even if this order is Hanafi, okay? Don't take the opinion of Khira al from, from uh, uh, interpreting hadith, you know, book of interpreting hadith. 
and you name it. Okay? Yani here you should go to the designated area. And this is even mentioned by Fuqaha ibn Abidin. He said, if you have in Hanafi Mazhab two different opinions, one mentioned in its designated area and other thing mentioned elsewhere, you give the preference to the one mentioned in the designated area. Namely, if you have a matter related to Rahan, and it's mentioned in Kitab al-Rahan in Hashid ibn Abdin, so and so, and it's mentioned elsewhere in the book, Otherwise, you go by the first one because this is the designated area for Rahan. You got this point? Okay. And uh, you are going to find a lot of mistakes. I give you an example of it. I met with a sheikh, you know, giving fatwa. This during Hajj. <coughs> give me a fatwa that the third day, you know, you have a rush, you know, and people, all of them, they want to rush away from Mina in the third day. And there's weak statement in Hanafi and other mazhab that may stone from pleasure time. But that person, what did he say? No, you may stone from the midnight. And myself, I was eager to go. See, from where did he get this? He said, I read in Bidayat al Mushtahid. This is the first point, okay? Bidayat Mushtahid is not a book of Fakah Muqara to compare with, between Mazhab. This is not the best good to get the fatwa from it, okay? You don't get fatwa from Bidayat Mushtahid. That, according to Maliki, is not permitted, but, but according to the others, is permitted. This is the other problem. And here you have Maliki book speaking about the other Mazhab that it's permitted to be done. Why you did not go to the Hanafi book, to the Shafi'i book, to the Hanbali book? You took this piece of information about these three Mazhab from where? From Maliki book. I return back to that book with that book. That is very precise book. And the, the wording of it may mean this possibility. But since I know that this person, Ibn Rashid, he takes a lot from Ibn Abdul Bar. I return back to Ibn Abdul Bar. And you see, by conveying this phrase from one book to another, it has been changed a little bit, and this change gave the suggestion. Assume I read this book, okay? And I understand that this is the opinion according to Hanafi, Shafi'i, and Hanbal. What should I do? If I am muhaqqiq, before making fatwa and giving this information to the other, what should I do? I should go to the books of Hanafi, books of Shafi'i, books of Hanbali. But to give it as a possibility from book of Fuqa Bukharan according to Maliki, which has this problem when he conveyed this uh, sentence, you know, from one book to another, it's too silly. You got my point about it? We face this problem a lot. We have a lot of people, you know, they say, this is the opinion according to Abu Hanifa. No, my friend, this is not the opinion of Abu Hanifa. Okay? Yeah, and some people, they ask me that, because recently you have uh, Ahkam ibn al-Faras, which is a very great book, you know, and the person is quite knowledgeable, that he narrated that Abu Hanifa said so and so, I told him no. Even though I highly respect that author, and really I enjoy reading his book, you know, but I'm, I'm going to show you from Hanafi text how did they say it, okay? Because <coughs> that is my point. First point, you know, of tahqiq, don't take any statement about anyone except from the resources that are accepted. I'm going to speak shortly about the book that you may rely on and the book that you, don't, you cannot rely on, okay? So here is very important. When it's related to names, Go to the books of names. When it's related to chain, go to the, to the book of chains. When it's related to something all else, you know, of understanding, I think this you should have, all of you should have. I encourage my students to have it. Whenever you read any text, as a reader, you should have the common look, the frame of what the, the author wants to tell you, 
And then you, you should have the specific wording of each thing. Okay? I'm sorry, I've, out of experience, I'm very completely wrong. The worst among people who did not have the common look, they are the non Arabic speakers. And I have many of the non Arabic speakers, they come to read with me, Foko, or this or that. You find them that they concentrate a lot of, on the meaning of the word and the structure of the sentence more than the frame. Okay? I would like to have both looks together. Because in many occasions, or, uh, you are going to find that the statement is wrong. There's a missing la, which changed the whole meaning, okay? Why did you, how you are going to, to feel the missing? You are not going to feel the missing if you did not understand. But when you look at the frame, you will understand that this is the way the author want to express. When you find it otherwise, literally, for sure, I'm not going to deny it or say it's wrong. What I'm going to do? I'm going to check in other books. Okay, and here tahqiq from where did it start? For sure, I'm not going to make tahqiq of everything. If you recite on me Fatiha, silly to go and make tahqiq of Fatiha. You know, it's very obvious and well. Okay, but here, whenever you have any suspicion, you should make tahqiq. Okay. Well, one of the way of knowing the suspicion, what is it? When you look at the frame of the whole thing that the author tried to tell you, and you feel it contradict with, with the literal meaning there, okay? You should be suspicious. And the other way, as I said, you know, about people, about another way, which people, they don't tend to make it frequently, is, this person, whenever he speak about this issue, about the, or about this person, usually he bring it in this way, in this phrasing, okay? You should get used to your books, okay? That uh, Bukhari, when he speak about this narrator, he's going to speak by this way or by this day. When you have it otherwise, okay? This should be, should put question mark. Firstly, you should make sure about the name is right or wrong. Secondly, if it's right, you may have it right sometime. You should ask yourself, why did the Bukhari change his tone? Okay, this is tahqiq. Why did the Bukhari change? I give you an example about it in Bukhari. Nowadays, you have people, they say, since the Prophet died, you know, you shouldn't say Assalamu alaikum ayyuh nabi, you say Assalamu alaikum nabi. This is narrated in Bukhari. Go to Bukhari. He has a book of prayer. Has the narration there, Assalamu alaikum ayyuh nabi. And everything. Okay. Then, then you go, seven or eight volumes, volume number nine. You find that hadith in Kitab al istizan he mentioned that hadith. How do you feel about it? Did Bukhari support this idea? If Bukhari support this idea, he shouldn't mention it in Kitab al istizan Where he should mention it? In Kitab al-Salah. Because this is the designated. You see, yani here you should feel yourself dealing with a person in front of you, not papers, okay? Person, you should understand what that person wants to tell you. And this is the point of tahqiq, okay? Last story about tahqiq. I'm being sorry you know about it. A student to, to, to come to me, he's uh, from UK, Pakistani from UK. I really is a good one, you know. He recited the whole Quran with Sheikh Abu Hassan, he could be very famous reciter of Quran in Damascus. And he figured out to make a book, you know, of Qira'at, that person. Okay, he's not my student, sorry. Okay. So, as it's an, a habit, you know, in the Arabic world, you know, whenever you have a book, you should have a introduction done by some of the famous youth there, okay? So, he went to a famous sheikh asking him for introduction for this book. That sheikh, I highly respect him, he's still alive. 
He said, I'm not specialized here. I'm going to refer you to so-and-so. He referred that person to me. I look at the book. Firstly, if you are going to write down a book, you know, with no change with others' book, I'm not going to accept it, okay? What's the point of having an, another book adding to the library, a, a book without any smart or no idea? There's no point of it. Then I found this is book of Quran, I'm speaking about Qira'at, and he has some mistakes. I told him, sorry, I cannot make introduction for you. You have these two problems, you know. I used to, and I still go to visit UK a lot, you know, and his teacher there in UK, he sat with me, wants to blame me over. I, he was quite fair. I explained to him that we have this reason. I can't. No, no, the story is not him. After a year or so, he brought the book to me, that person, to back in Syria. And he has nine introductions from different scholars in Damascus. Okay, yani if you are the one who is not known at all in the fruit. I, I, I have the ability to bring it from nine different in the research. And I'm sorry to tell you, among these nine, only one he mentioned, there is some few mistakes you know should be corrected. Come on. And here you are speaking about Quran. Is it, is it a good way you know to say there are few mistakes that should be corrected? And this one out of nine. Okay. So what, I, what I'm trying to say, whenever you have a book, and you have those huge names, you know, at the beginning. Don't be fooled by these matters, okay? Use your mind, use your analysis. You may be mistaken sometimes, you may be wrong sometimes, but you should use those matters, you know, to fix the most accurate word in, in, in its space, okay? And this is, uh, in my view at least, we suffer a lot of it. And we, I, I feel that, yeah, personally, I myself, I love the old books. I don't like the good, the, the, the new books. Because of this problem, because in many experiments of mine, you know, you are going to find a lot of mistakes in the new books, you know, that uh, in the discipline. So again, this is one of the matter that you should have it in yourself, and you should teach your student, you know, to have it. Okay? Because if they started their life, you know, by this way of tahqiq, hopefully they are going to be muhaqq. If, uh, yalla, we are tired now, you know, and we are going to finish this, and it's going to be otherwise. Okay? And this is very important. And we have many other reasons, we have many, and this is me, you may derive it from the Holy Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayu al-ladina amanu ija'akum fasiqu bilaba ifta, tabayyanu. And there's another, it has been expressed in the Quran as tabayyun or tasabbut, and we are in real need of it. Okay? The point after it to seek the accuracy of it and be faithful. Many of those who deal in this field, perhaps in the U.S. we don't have it a lot, you know, but other, uh, elsewhere you have it, you know. We have it a lot, you know, in Syria. I, I think we have it much more in Egypt, okay? And people, they tend to show themselves, you know, that they are, okay? Here, you should give this to your <coughs> student and have it as a part of your character. I don't care, even if I am wrong, I'm going to move my opinion to the right opinion, okay? I'm not going to stick to the bad opinion or the wrong opinion because I'm the teacher, I'm the one who has been given this degree or not, okay? And here, you should be, you should give the feeling to the others that the most important one in your life to do, know the most accurate knowledge. When you are wrong, we are ready to change it right away. This may sound easy and simple and reasonable, but in other occasions you don't have. And I'm sorry to bring you this story, which I keep in, which you read it in Tabakat al Quran. And then Jazari mentioned about famous reciter of Quran, the Quran, who spent 
70 years teach, teaching Quran. And when he was, he has a recital of Quran of Susi, Qiraat Susi. In Qiraat Susi, you have a lot of idgham. And he told the student, you should make idgham here, which is not the case. Okay, this exception, okay? And you have in each uh, rule, you have exception of this is an exception, well known to all those who give them uh, if themselves you know, to know about Qira'ah. He said you should not have an idgham. And when he was told about it, that this is exception, he did not return back. He said, no, this should be, you should have an idgham. And when I look, look at this story, I feel so really I feel so. This person, yani, he spent 70 years not to say the Quran. Because when it came, when you have some contradiction between Quran and his, uh, let's say, ego or his uh, reputation, he gave the prefer preference to his reputation. Okay? Yani here, as a teacher, make the other feel free to connect. I think this is not a uh, significant problem here in the U.S. out of my experience, but as elsewhere it is a problem. But the second point may be a problem. What is it? To be fair. When you have someone mistaken, you try to give him the excuse. This he was mistaken because of this or that. To be fair more when you speak about the other masjid. Okay? Yani I attended many majals in Syria or Damascus, they will be Hanafi and they are going to criticize the Shafi. And I am, I know something about Shafi. I'm going to defend Shafi to the extent that they may, some of the people, you know, that person, they may be that I'm Shafi, okay? Which is not that, okay, and here you should have the fairness in your teaching, okay? Be fair. From where did you, uh, do you take it? First text of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say? He said, In tuti'u fariqan min al-ladhina utu al-kitab. He did not say, In tuti'u ahl al-kitab. Okay? When you are going to obey some of those people who were given kitab. Okay? He said some. And I look at this as really fair expression from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he said in Tudira al is going to be completely different, right? He said some of them. You take it from the tradition of the Prophet. You know, you know that one of those uh, liar prophets was Al Aswad al Anasi. He declared that he's prophet you know, during the time of the Prophet. And he used to say that there's an angel called Zunnun come to me. When they brought this knowledge to the Prophet, he did not say. This is liar and he's the son of liar and never you have. He said, no. He mentioned a very great angel among the angels. See, this is, I look at it as fairness from the Prophet. Even though that person is liar, you know, but when he, when he mentioned a truthful piece of information, the Prophet <coughs> did not deny it. Okay? So you should get used to seek. The truth and be fair with the others. Then we come to this point. <coughs> I don't know what your position here. I know about our position back in Syria. Many people they are interested in Riwaya, but in Diraya, you hardly find anyone. I did meet with two or three persons here, they are interested in Riwaya just to get a Sadid and whatever you know. I don't know if this is the case. Okay. And here, in Islamic sciences, you have riwaya and diraya. Riwaya means transmission. Diraya means you understand. To my surprise, and many of you people in my surprise, even tajweed, even qiraat, you should have diraya. You should know how did it come, from where did it come, okay? The, the way it was done. Why this is exception? You see, 
يعني here as a teacher I don't see any excuse that besides transmission because besides conveying that the, the information to me you should explain to me why which is the right and I hardly find it you know back in Syria I don't know what's your position here but you should have a bottom when a person was making qiraat on me okay and he want to recite Al-Ada in Surah the uh, Yunus and I start speaking to him, explain <coughs> to him how according to Warsh you have the difference among the people of it. What did he say? He said, just tell me the way you want me to pronounce it and I'm going to pronounce it. <laughs> yani, I was really tired, you know, I'm just explaining to him, speaking, 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 speaking for 15 minutes or so, then he told me, please, the way you want me to pronounce it, tell me about it, I'm going to pronounce it. <laughs> okay? This is, give me indirect message, and this person interested in jaza, interested in being, you know, one of the Qurlah, but he, even if he did not know from where did it come. And to be honest with you, you have a lot of controversy, you have a lot of differences, you know, because we did not know from where did it come. And perhaps the most obvious example, you know, I don't know if you have to, when you have people, you know, they say, whenever you have ikhta shafawi, you shouldn't have the lips, you know, closed. They should be open. Tell me, the hijab. Okay? From where did this come? If you go scientifically, you know, to search it and inspect it, you are going to find from where did it come. Okay? So, what I'm trying to say, regardless of your specialty, so uh, either your specialty is in riwaya or diraya, namely riwaya like what? Like when you are in memorizing hadith, memorizing the Quran, uh, uh, any of those matter, you know, tajweed, qiraat, okay? You should have a room for what? For understanding, okay? You shouldn't be blind, you know, and go by, it, okay? For sure, those matters, you don't have a lot of room to say why this or why not that, you know, because it's, they came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here, to know the reason behind it, I, I think it's going to be quite helpful for yourself and when you build this for the students, very, be, going to be very good. On the other hand, when we deal with diraya sciences like Foko, like Mante or whatever, it's going to be much more important. In my experience, I may be wrong, you know, here, uh, back in our countries, most people, they are interested in riwaya. Okay, don't tell me about it. This is, yani, we are, alhamdulillah, we really understand everything. No, my friend, you don't understand everything. Okay, <laughs> and here, you should have, yani, uh, and why it's too important? Because if you don't feel the importance of, of it in yourself, you cannot deliver it to the student. Even if you spoke about it. If they said, if they observed you, you know, in most cases that you don't give significant portion of your class, of, of your explanation to the raya, they, they will get the message, you know, from you right away. That is not important, okay? Just give riwaya and that's which is not the case, okay? Uh, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlighted in many verses, in the Fidelika la ayati li uli al albab, or the qawmini aqilun, or the uli nuha, or whatever, okay? And you have a space, you should have this Fidelika. And other areas, you may not, okay? That's why I told you before, you know, in Qiraat, you have some exceptional matters that they, they may not give good reason about it. You recite hafaz. You are teachers, for sure you should know hafaz, okay? You recite majreha. Why do not, not have any other word, you know, in the Qur'an mentioned in the same way? Okay? I may not have the answer. I may not have the right. Yani I'm not here to put down a riwaya and the transmission. We should put it up. We should highly respect it. But besides it, you know, within, whenever you have a room or whenever you have a space to give for the raya, you should do as, as such. It's very important. Regardless of your subject, 
or what, what, uh, regardless of your specialty or your field, whatever you are teaching, you should give the diraya what it deserves, you know, in that regard. Then I come to that point that I mentioned before. You should be quite familiar about the scholars that you accept their statement and the books that you accept. It's very important point, especially nowadays. Why especially nowadays? Nowadays you have the computer and you have the internet. You may get whatever book you want, whatever statement you, you want. But this is not going to change the story. We still have in Hanafi Mazhab, as Ibn Abidin mentioned at the beginning, their special book, they are not accepted. There's special, a uh, few scholars, you know, he said, he said, he narrated this from someone else. We inspected so and so and we found him frequently mistaken. We inspected so and so and we found him frequently right. Okay? And here, even the people who are way higher than us, you know, in Fuqa, they relate themselves to the most accurate and truthful books and the most accurate and truthful scholars. Okay? And what I'm trying to say, anyone who wants to search in Fuqa or any other Islamic sciences, you may find whatever you want. And everything is going to be halal, okay? And if we are going to search, you know, everything is going to be halal for you. But we should be careful, okay? You know where to take what and adopt it, okay? I would rather say much more than this for Fuqah. You should know the art of fatwa in each matter, which is may, may be completely different to the other, okay? Yeah, in myself, you know, when I start learning about Fuqah, I would like to make it easy on, on people, you know, that's why I learned other than Fuqah <coughs> Hanafi, which was the original one that, that, that I read. But then I found out, you should know the art of these books, you know, and these people, and how to make fatwa, okay? And in, in, in each mazhab, for example, you have a book or more written about how to give fatwa. Perhaps I concentrated a lot on focus, but this is applicable for everything. <coughs> you can't take clear out from any book, no? You should have confidence, you know, in that book. You can't have qiraat from any sheikh, no. You can have tajweed from any sheikh, the way he recites Quran, no. And you name it. And this is applicable to all branches of al uh, all branches of science, okay? Yeah, you should get it from the trusted one. Okay? And this is, has been initiated Firstly, in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and when they come to you with an order, they will give you the power of the See? And here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, some of the commands of the Quran, they may abuse it, them. If they are going to return them back in the life of the Prophet to the Prophet, and to those who are in charge, you know, that they know how to derive and what, what we understand from that verse Allah blamed those people who did not do so and as in our time you should do it you are Hanafi I highly respect you but to gain my respect you should go by the books which are accepted according to Hanafi in Maliki when I read, you know, about the art of fatwa and maniki, they mentioned the books that you cannot give fatwa from them. Okay? And you, you, in, even in Shafi'i, even in Hanbali, in all mazhab, you have books that are fully co uh, uh, confident, you know, and you may trust them, and you have other ones. You have some ulama that they are asad. I give you an example about it. Those who said that Palak Salas is one considered one, who did they mention? They mentioned Ibn Ishaq. I'm, I'm going to ask the audience. Have you heard Ibn Ishaq mentioned among the fuqaha? Never. It will be mentioned in Sirah. 
You see? يعني هي but they mentioned Ibn Ishaq among those people who said the three is one. I don't know how accurate is this statement, you know, but I don't think it's comforting. I'm going to follow Ibn Ishaq. Then they mentioned two scholars, you know, in Maliki Mazhab. When you read Maliki Mazhab, you never find the names of these two people. You got my point? يعني here, as you have in all aspects of your life, okay? Yeah, some new product, you know, introduced to you and from not known company to you. Are you going to buy it right away? No. <coughs> Personally, myself, how do I do? I wait till the others, they try it, you know, and they praise it, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, when asked if it's from well-known, you know, a famous company, you know, I'm going to take it to the writer. You see this point? And as we do in our life regarding many of those matters, you know, that we have in this life, we should have it in, 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 uh, in your Islamic sciences, in your Islamic knowledge, and you should try to make your boys and girls, you know, they are fully... Uh, familiar, you know, with this way, you know, of uh, picking up what you should rely on and what is confident and what competition and what is not. Okay, this is very important point. Okay, you cannot give an even if you show me that book, you know. I'm not going to change change my opinion. Okay, if you say the rule is so and so. I tell you, no, the rule is so and so. You brought me a book, and this book narrated it to certain scholar, you know, in Hadar. And I know that that book and that scholars, they are not the one that we rely on, okay? They may be much more knowledgeable. Yani, hey, let's say, because I am an expert, you know, in Hanafi for one way or another, you know. In Hanafi, they give the opinion of Abu Hanifa, Abu Yusuf, and Muhammad. You may have Zufar much more knowledgeable than Muhammad and than Abu Yusuf, okay? But this is the Mazhab Hanaf. You, you got my point? Okay? And here when you speak about Zufar, it's not going to be as equal as three, these three persons, you know. In Maliki Mazhab, Ibn al-Qasim, because he answered all of these questions, he became the first one after Imam Malik. Even though Ibn Wahab and the other, they may be much more knowledgeable than him, okay? And here we are speaking about What's delivered to us, what's given to us. We are not speaking about the people themselves. That person that is rejected, he may be much better than millions of me, you know, focal wise, uh, religiously wise, and you name it, okay? But here, this person, I cannot trust him for this, okay? What's the best example of it? No doubt, Sayyidina Abbas Masroud is much better than all of the recital of Quran in our time. And no doubt, he has some kiraash as if that you are not permitted to do it nowadays. And if you are going to do it, either myself or someone else is going to punish you. Okay? <laughs> if you didn't do it. Subhanallah, we are criticizing Masood. No, I'm not criticizing Masood. I'm telling you that I'm quite sure that Masood did read some of these verses the way you narrated. But I'm not quite sure. I not. I not. I don't have any proof that this is Quran. Okay. And these qiraat seven, we know that they are Quran. The others, they may be those people who read it. Them, they may be much higher and much stronger than the seven, seven reciters, you know. But to our people, you know, nowadays we don't have the proof that this is Quran. Okay. Yani, please, when you deal with sciences. <coughs> Don't take it personal. Okay? Don't take it personal. When you have very weak hadith, you know, and I deny it, I did not deny the Prophet Hasha wa kalla. Okay? Because it's mentioned there, Qala Rasulullah. I did not deny it. I did, did deny the shame that he wrote to me. This is, does it mean by any, any way that the Prophet did not say it? You may have another stronger chain you have here, but Whatever you brought to me, okay, this is not if, uh, enough for me as scholar, as teacher, okay, and this is, should be your way, okay. It's not a personal matter. And all of us, not all of us, even those people before us, you may have mistaken some of his books, you know. Nothing wrong with this, you know. Even the famous scholar, he may have, 
But perhaps I'm not eligible to tell about his mistake. But when I found that those who are superior than him, they said that he has a mistake here, I may feel free to speak about it. You got my point? And again, this point may be abused sometimes. Are you more knowledgeable than Ibn Mas'ud? Are you more knowledgeable than Tahawi? No, I'm not no more, more knowledgeable than them, okay? But I have my people, you know, who said that this was wrong, okay? Then we come to that point that I promised someone about Ikhtisas, okay? He said about Ikhtisas. I think All students of knowledge, for sure they introduce you, your people to me as ulama, not students of knowledge, okay? All students of knowledge, they should have the least recommended knowledge of Islamic sciences. I don't want to be, if you are specialized in Qiraat, I don't want you to be specialized in Fuqah or Hadith, no. But it's shame on you if you don't have any idea about Qiraat or Hadith. You got my point? Okay. Yani here, since you deal with Islamic knowledges, which is a very broad one, it's shame in such, such a person not to have the base, the essentials, you know, of those matters. And this is one of my complaints, as, as I said, you know, before, when you have many of books of Tafsir or many of books of interpretation of Hadith, they may convey wrong mas'ala, you know, from Imam Abu Hanifa or from so and so Qari or this and that, okay? And here, uh, we are not going to be immune, we are not ma'asoom, okay? But we sti we, we're still entitled to take away many of our mistakes, okay? And this is one way, one way of taking away the mistakes. How? By having the essential knowledge, you know, about other aspects of Islamic sciences. And this is when, when you show your student that you are eager to know those essentials, you are going to implant in them, you know, the love. Not to, to say, I don't care about this matter because I am specialized in Quran, okay? This is, I, I don't like to hear this comment, okay? Since you and we have this problem, I don't know if you have it in the West, we have back in Syria. All of them, they are called Sheikh. It's a real problem. And the one who read, when we have a dead person is called Sheikh, the one who read the prayer is called Sheikh, and the, uh, the teacher is called Sheikh, and uh, you name them. And the, those common people, they don't know if they specialize in Fuqah or Hadith or Quran or this or that. Is this problem or not? It's a problem. Why? Because I may ask a person who is the wrong person, you know, some question, and in many occasions I may even receive an answer to it. Okay? And this has happened even for the old people, you know, are highly respected, you know. And here you have, I'm going to bring this mas'ala to you. This is, you have this discussion all the time. It's the Western Quran, the way it's written. It's the Wukifi, from the Prophet or not. According to all reciters of Quran, it is. You have very famous scholars, you know, they said no. But when you, when you look at these famous scholars, this is not their specialty. One, is, one of them is specialized in Aqidah, the other one in Fuqah, the third one in Tarikh. Okay, you got my point? Here you should get the specialized one. Okay? You highly respect that person. But this is, I'm sorry my friend, this is not much his, his specialty. And this Imam Shati, we mentioned it in, in the Muwafaqat, he said, al ijma' the consensus, is the consensus of those who are specialized in that field. Okay? Yani, what I understand from his comment, when you have consensus about this, among these people, this assume the rest of the knowledgeable people, you know, in Islam, Muslim community, they are against. This is, you call it consensus. I'm sorry to bring this story, you know, they just, and some people, they have fun, you know, 
your my people Muslim, you say Ijma. How come you have Ijma? Yani when you have voting, you know, in the ways, the best president may have 52 or 53. How come you have 100 percent? My friend, you don't understand the real meaning of Ijma'a. If you speak about Ijma'a among those who are specialized, yes, it's possible to have 100%, especially in the old times during the Khulafa al rajidin Why? During the Khulafa al rajidin was much easier than after, because those governors, rahimahullah ta'ala, radiallahu anhu wa those governors, they were really interested in giving the right decision or the right answer and they used to collect the scholars you know all the time for any of these matters is it possible or not it is possible to have another person okay but it's not a voting matter not a matter of my principle you see yani here we became silly when we compare something to something which is doesn't similar to it okay and as imam shatri said when you seek in ijma or consensus you look at the people of that specialized field if you have the adults, all of them, and they deny it, you don't care about it. Okay. And that's why I, I look forward to have from myself and from the audience that all of us, if you, are, if you deal with Islamic sciences, you should have at least the least essential needed matter, you know, especially when you are a teacher. Because even if you are a teacher of Fuqah, you may have a, a, a boy ask you, you know, is that Ibn Hunayf the one attended better or not? And he's going to feel bad if you say, no, I'm sorry, I don't know. They mentioned, you know, about some scholars, you know, I don't know how accurate is this term. If you are not going to keep silent, I'm going to tell the people that you don't know Uhud is before better or better before Uhud. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, here it's shame, shame on people, you know, to be to, to reach that extent, you know, of uh, ignorance, okay? Uh, even though this is not your specialty, okay? So here, besides your specialty, you should enrich your knowledge in other uh, 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 Muslim sciences, you know, to the least amount. Perhaps here in U.S., as uh, some problem has been brought to me, perhaps for other modern sciences you should do so. And here, <coughs> you are very, yani, for people, they, you, should, you should keep reading and studying and having magazines and follow. Because uh, I already am stranger, you know, I have, have received some complaint about your people. Okay? And here, many of you in the mosque, they you will be, be asked, you know, about certain questions, certain, questions, certain modern matters, you know, and you don't know. I don't feel it shame not to know, to know about them, but at least you should have the ability to refer this person, this asker to someone else. And I imagine in many cases you don't have the ability to do so. And as if, I'm sorry to say so, as if you are telling the asker, get lost, you know. I don't care about this question. Which is going to make many of these people, you know, run away. And here, when you are given a position like imam, or like teacher, or this or that, as I said at the beginning of my talk, you should have the full responsibility. Now you are not in your, by your own. You are representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are representing Islam. You are present, okay? For sure, if I am fair with you, I know that you are limited and I'm not going to uh, understand and know all of these matters. But at least give me a reference. Help me. Okay? Help me. And you should think about it. I sh and you should find solution for these problems. And I, I think this is not a sporadic one. This is a communal problem. I, the one who paid this to my attention, you know, I told him this is a communal problem and you should find the solution uh, among the whole community. You cannot find the solution by one person who is Imam or this or that. Okay. There is another point. Hufz al And to keep your tongue. I think, now I see, I feel it's not enough. 
حفظ الجوارح let's say because when one woman in the time of the Prophet وسلم, she pointed that that woman is short you know by this point the Prophet وسلم, said this is very dirty word it is going to be mixed by the ocean it's going to make all of the ocean dirty okay and here I'm sorry to tell you as a teacher or scholar you are under the camera all the time They will see how you smile, how the impression of your eyes, how you are going to move your hands, and on the, on the most important thing, you know, at the top of all of this matter, how do you speak? And I'm sorry to tell you, and I cannot cover up this, you know, in the past and in the present, we have many of those scholars, you know, who spoke badly about the others. <coughs> And you should protect yourself of having this. And this is, I take it originally from where? From the tradition, from the Prophet. When he was in Tabu, he asked, What's about Ka'ab ibn Mali? And you have a person who oh, is from the same subsection, you know, from Bani Salim, the same group of Ka'ab ibn Mali, who spoke badly about Ka'ab ibn See, Sayyidina Mu'adha bin Jabal, what did he say? He said, Ya Rasulullah, la na'alamu illa khaira. We haven't known anything about him except the good thing. You read it in the Hadith Karma, you read it. What's the meaning of it? You see the knowledgeable person, I am quite sure, positive that Mu'adha bin Jabal is knowledgeable person. Okay? And he may know some of those matters mentioned there, but he has the akhlaq, the characters of Hafz al -Bisad. He protects you. And this is it's going to save you firstly. You see, this reminded me when you have that bad accusation about say the Aisha hadith al -Athir. The other wife of the Prophet Sayyidina Zainab bin Jahsh was asked, What did he say? What did she say? She said, Ahmi Sam'i wa basari. I'm going to protect my eyes and my ears. Why? These are gifts from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala given to me. I have never heard anything, you know, except the good thing. And Subhanallah, she was protected by the punishment in this life and by the adab al in the after. Okay, right. And you, as knowledgeable people, as ulama, you should find your way there. Okay, always. Be polite, okay? Don't try to put any of those colors down, okay? And uh, be fair, okay? You, you have people, you know, who are not that good, and even sometimes they may speak badly about some scholar or sometimes about some companion. I, I did see, I hear it, you know. Amar Khattab was completely wrong. Oh my God, you are speaking this, you know. If this يعني, against your opinion or against Abu Hanifa opinion, that's me Al Khattab is wrong. Okay, you got this point? And here is Hibz al is uh, why? Because if you are a teacher, you are going to be exposed to many of those masala that someone will tell you the Shafi said so, if you are teaching Hanafi or the Maliki said so, what you are going to say? When you, are, when you deal with hadith, with the same thing, when you, you, you see? يعني, Try to be respected, okay? And you are going to be respected whenever you keep your tongue clean all the time, okay? Some people may think, no, I want to clarify that rules about that person or whatever. I think, you know, in general speaking, you are going to have bad reputation yourself. And you are going to, you are not going to change the fact, okay? And the worst thing which I completely refute, what is it? When you have the one who differs in opinion to the other one, speak about his sincerity. Okay? I I'll give you an example. Personally, I have a lot of difference of opinion with Ibn Taymiyyah, okay? Someone introduced a book for me. I hate that book. Why? 
Because he starts speaking about Ibn Taymiyyah that he is not sincere. I completely reject this piece of knowledge. No, Ibn Taymiyyah was sincere, was knowledgeable, was smart. Okay? Being wrong doesn't deny those matters. You got my point? Okay. And this is related to what? To the fairness that we mentioned before. You should be fair. Okay? And don't, please, don't accuse anyone about his sincerity. You may have kafir and sincere. I think, yani, I was about to say Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl, no, it's not sincere, you know, because he said we have competition with Bani Abdi Manaf. And then they said if we have a prophet, we cannot bring a prophet. But some of those people, you know, old people, even though his kafir is in hellfire, you know, he may be sincere. Okay? If he is sincere, it's not a good idea to accuse him of his sincerity. Okay? You may accuse him that he's kafir. You may accuse him that he had done this which is wrong, okay? But generally speaking, you don't look at the heart. Okay? And you may have many of these people, you know, are really sincere, you know, even though they are not Muslim, okay? This is, I'm not telling you, don't misunderstand me. I'm not telling you they are going to go to heaven. No, they are going to go to hellfire. But don't accuse them of something that they don't have, okay? You got my point? Even this is part of the prophetic characters. One of those poets, you know, the prophet Salah give good response to when his name was mentioned. And a person today was sitting, he got surprised. How come you Rasulullah? You gave this yani, good response, and this person is mushrik. What did he say? He said, do you compare him with he, when he was at Caesar, you know, at the king of Syria? What did he say about me, and what Abu Sufyan say about me? You see, yani here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave everyone whatever good, whatever right, whatever favor he has done, he has forgiven. Okay. But how, how great, how fair is he going to be? In the meanwhile, it's not going to be obsessive, you know, and praising these people, you know, and uh, 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 pretend as if the heaven is behind his uh, back, you know, and is going to give that person uh, two kilometers and the other one five miles and you name it. Okay? You got it. You should be moderate in all of these matters. You may differ with someone, be fair about it, be, protect your tongue, you know, don't speak badly about and all of these people. Let's assume you have the full right to speak about some people badly and you wish to do it in 99% and one person you were wrong. Is Allah Subhanahu is going to punish you for the 99? No. Because you have good thoughts. <coughs> but for this one percent, is Allah going to punish you? Yeah, this is a high probability that may Allah punish you. Okay, why? Because you spoke badly about certain person that is... Yani let's give this example. When we spoke about Ibn Taymiyyah, if a sincere person, let's speak with that, the author of that book. If he feels that this is one person that Ibn Taymiyyah is sincere and 99% that is not sincere. If Ibn Taymiyyah is not sincere, is going to gain anything? Nothing. Nothing is given to him. If, the, if that one person, Ibn Taymiyyah was sincere, I expect that Ibn Taymiyyah is going to complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about that. Okay. And I'm sorry to tell you, in many books, you know, I have read, you know, about certain you accusing the others of being non-sincere, you know, or insincere because of difference in opinion. Not, not mixed matters with you. Okay? Being mistaken, being wrong is different story than speaking about what's inside the heart. Okay? And this is, we suffer, yeah, back in our countries, we suffer a lot of those issues, you know. I don't know how bad the suburb of it, you know, here in your okay. Then you have al-khashyatu wal-wara. Okay, 
and we should be fearful of Allah and we should show wara. Wara, not to, to make the story too the story too long. As I said before, when you have one person and ninety-nine person, you should have wara. Okay, don't go by the ninety-nine person. Be in the same side. Do you have anything in our fuqah? Yes, we have in our fuqah. What did they say in fuqah? They said, al ihtiyat fi al ibadat wajib. And when you have a possibility of one person to know that your prayer is inaccurate, and you ask me what I'm going to tell you, go again and make it. Maghrib time still on. Now it's not on 6.30, right? Okay, but let's assume that. Maghrib time, go back and make it. Okay. This we call it an ihtiyat fi al ibadat And here you should have ihtiyat in your teaching. I think yeah, I feel sorry to speak about it because myself I did not do it when, when I got busy. I look forward to have it, you know, whatever. Whenever I give dollars, I would like to prepare myself, namely to read what I'm going to present and to double check after the uh, class, you know, with what I have given. I'm sorry, يعني, I'm a very bad person. I'm not the good one, you know. I don't know it nowadays, you know, because I give the excuse that I, I'm busy. But if you are not as such, please, يعني, sorry, we took your time today, but you have weekend, okay? Prepare yourself for Monday, okay? Whatever material you are going to give, prepare yourself. And that's why many of our students, whenever they are asked what they are going to do, they will not answer. They open the book and show you the answer. This is just to be sure about the answer and to make you sure about the answer. Okay? So this is, I take it from the wara. Okay? And this, uh, even they said, you know, in Fuqa, even if you gave fatwa of this mas'ala many times and you are asked here now, before giving the answer, go back and check the book. Okay? <coughs> That's my point. So here, we have khashya and wa. Khashya mean Allah. Fearful of Allah, subhanahu wa should be. Okay? Uh, when, one time, Sayyidina Masruq, who is a successor, famous successor, he said, كَفَ الْمَرْأَ عِلْمًا أَنْ يَخْشَ اللَّهِ وَكَفَ الْمَرْأَ جَهْلًا أَنْ يُعْجَ بَلِيعًا and here he gave us a standard of knowledge completely different than what we got used to. He said it's enough as a knowledge for any person to be fearful of Allah. When you look at it, you apply it to your practice. Let's assume this person he has one percent of knowledge and he has khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's fearful of Allah. In my view, whenever he is asked about something that he doesn't know, what is going to say? Going to say, I don't know. Yani if you ask this person, you know, the one who has one person to know of knowledge, is going to be accurate all the time. Why? Because he is fearful of Allah. On the other hand, if you have a person who has 99% to know knowledge, without khashia, you will not be sure you know, about his answer. Because perhaps this is the one person and he gave you the answer, you know, without being fearful You got my point? So here, really I fully understand the comment of Sayyidina Masroq when he said, It's enough as a knowledge for a person to be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa And it's enough an ignorance for any person to be proud of himself. Why? Why is it, what's the relation between ignorance and being proud? Because I don't even tell you, wait a minute please, I'm going to check it, check this mas'ala for you. Because I'm proud of myself. I should show you that I know this by <coughs> heart. I know it by heart. It's very easy. And for sure this may sound, you know, quite يعني, reasonable. This has been practiced, I think. 
You want me to tell you this story, this bad story? I'm going to tell you this story. I heard it from a person, a Moroccan person. This happened in Morocco. For sure, in Morocco, they are much better than us in Syria, you know, in teaching not only the Quran and the way it's written, okay? They have combination of them. We don't have it in Syria. So one person, they have a uh, like a uh, quiz or a uh, competition, you know, between two persons, you know, and one person asks the other about way of writing of a certain verse. And the first one to show, show him that it's quite easy what did he do, which is, I'm sorry to, yani I feel bad about it. <coughs> he wrote it in the soil with his foot. This memorizer of Quran at that night, they heard like these boys, you know, coming and taken away, and the whole Quran was taken away from him. So, what I'm trying to say, among those who are educated or they are knowledgeable over them, you may have competition, you may have that the one will show himself, you know, about the other, you may have all of these, but be careful about it. Put yourself down. This is not going to affect anything, okay? That's why you, we, all of us, we need a lot of khashya and a lot of wara of, of these matters. Especially when you give the information about these matters. There, we have something which may sound contradiction. Contradict with the other or controversy, okay? What is it? This is my view. I may be completely wrong, okay? I have, I heard about some shoes, they would go otherwise. I differ with them. <coughs> what is it? As a teacher, you should be humble and proud. This is the way I look at it. You should be humble, why? Because if you are too high, you know, not high in the... <laughs> no, not too high in that thing, you know. If you are proud too, too much you know, about yourself, will not enable anyone to ask you. And without asking you, they will not understand. But if you are too low, this is the philosophy I look at it, you know. Usually water doesn't come from the low land to the high, higher one. Okay? And that's why I think you have the filter. The one who wants to speak with the other, teach the other, should be higher than you. If the, he doesn't have this higher position, you will not be able to give the knowledge to them. Okay? It may sound strange, it may sound contradict with the con confrontation here, but this is your way. Okay? And you should be humble to make it easy on the other. And you should be, yani whenever you have something wrong, measure, you should be too tough, okay? And uh, uh, they, will, they will not get along with you, okay? And you should have both of them, you know, inside with them. Then, we should spoke, uh, speak about characters in general, you know? Perhaps the time doesn't permit me you know, to speak about all characters of scholars, you know? But you have, I, I am familiar with two, two big books, you know, one book speak about, in theory speak about the characters of pro, uh, the scholar, and the other one speak about the practice, okay? Yani the, the, if you are interested more in the theory, you go by the first <coughs> one called in Akhlaq al ulama it's called in Arabic. What was the author? I forgot. The other one, called Akhlaq al-Ulama, and it's completely different than the first one. Why? Because the other one, for example, when they speak about patience, you know, being patient, you know, of, of the ulama, they bring you two or three stories, you know, about patience, you know, of the ulama. So if you are interested and you would like to spend time, you know, reading stories, the second one will be much more beneficial for you. If you have the gut, you know, to, uh, sit down, you know, and read about theory, the first one is going to be much more beneficial. Okay. The other point I highlighted a little bit in the introduction, 
you have it in practice. Okay? <coughs> yani you should practice what you do. When you tell people you know about Salat al Duha, you should pray Salat al Duha as a teacher in front of you, uh, in front or not in front of your student. Okay? Yani I hear this story, I don't know, from one person that a sheikh, he has a student who never disobey his sheikh. And there's a slave this in the old days, slave of that student. That slave came to the shade, then please, please, please tell my my master to finish. Okay. And it took him how how long? It took him one year. After a year, he told that person, free you, your slave. And right away he freed. Oh my God, this, this day we went back to yani it. Is it necessary to leave me, you know, one year, you know, working hard, you know, and have this miserable life with that person? And the Sheikh told him, I'm sorry. I have never in my life freed any, any slave. What did I do? I collected money. He collected money till I bought a slave and freed him. Then after that, I told him to free you slave. Okay? Yani, uh, why this? Sheikh has the acceptance you know, among students because he apply all of those rules and regulations to himself. What would he say about them you know, at the beginning? Especially in the Quran, by what? Al-Rabbaniyun wal Okay? Al-Rabbaniyun, I, I may understand it as the real practitioner of all instruction given by them. Okay? <coughs> Who was Rabbani Wadi al Ummah? No, Zayd ibn Sabit is Rabbani Wahadi al Because quite knowledgeable person, you know, and very good practitioner, you know, of it. So here, the one who gets benefit of his knowledge, the expectation that he, he has high possibility of giving this knowledge to the Allah and make it beneficial for him. The one who did not himself get benefit of his knowledge, most probably, will not be able to. But this is not to change the facts, okay? Whenever you know any facts, we we'll tell that, that person, this is what you should do. I'm sorry I'm not doing it because of deficiency in myself, okay? Be clear about it, okay? And here, this is not to tell the person, don't do it, don't ask the person, don't advise the person when you do not do it, okay? And this mentioned by Imam Ghazali and the other. Even if you are bad practitioner, you know, you should give advice to them. You got my point? Okay. But the expectation, especially for the teachers, you know, the most effective one among them, those who are good practitioners. And this is we call it, what we call it, Al-Ilm al nafia When the Prophet says, Allah many asaluka ilm al nafia the first meaning comes to Ilm al nafia when I get benefit from my Okay. There's something called Amana. And you know the results. What I'm speaking about. You may have an accurate piece of information. But you shouldn't give it to the asker. Even though it's accurate. Why? Because he is going to abuse it. You got my point? I mentioned, I don't know how I heard this story, that Sayyidina Ibn Abbas was sitting with his people and a person passed through asking, the killer, does, ha does he have a repentance? Is it possible to make repentance for the killer? He said, no. After a while, another person passed with the same question. <laughs> Ibn Abbas said, yes. And those students, they got, you know, surprised. How come? Yes and no. He said, the first one wants to go and kill a person. But he wants to make sure that he may make repentance after it. I told him, no. No repentance. The other one, he already killed a person. And he feels sorry, really feels sorry. 
and he wants to repent to Allah. I told him yes. You got my point? Okay. And this is amana. Okay? Yani not everything you know, you just deliver it to the others. Okay? I used to be here in U.S. And a, a Christian from uh, Middle East, you know, used to, used to be resident with us. He said, even in your Quran, you have a verse tells that Sayyidina Isa is a God. And I know that verse that he mentioned, okay? I told him, is this verse, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَالْمَسْيُحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ He said, no. Is it, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ سَالِسُ ذَا He said, stop saying, كَفَرَ كَفَرَ Why? Because I don't want to give him the verse that is going to support his idea. You got my point? This doesn't mean that it's not in Quran. It is in Quran. I believe in it, you know, but I'm not going to tell the other and teach the other person to bring what support his wrong idea. You got my point? This is what is it? It's a mana, okay? <laughs> All of you as teacher or you are given a mana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's from you? To use it the way it should be used. And this is mentioned by Sayyidina Isa bin Maryam. He said, the one who gives this knowledge to the, the one who is not eligible to it, like the one who put diamond on a beak. Okay? That's me. Even though you may have very accurate, very straightforward. That's why some of the narrators of the hadith they blame a narrator of hadith when he conveyed to Hajjaj that hadith, you know, speaking how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam killed those people who uh, break the, their commitment, you know, and whatever. Why? Not because the hadith is not accurate. The hadith is mentioned in Bukhari, but because that Hajjaj, as you may know about him, he was famous killer, you know, and he is going to kill free, you know, to kill much more, you know, when he hears this hadith. You see this point? And here you should be selective. You should know to tell who what. Then we have this problem, you know, for sure you suffer from it, I suffer from it, everyone suffer of it. I have a theory about it, you know, in practice I haven't seen it. These great books that we have, I told you about the old books, I told you about the new books, and you name it. But this is the task of all of us, to sim simplify the Islamic knowledge, okay? I'm sorry to tell you, some of these books, they are too complicated, okay? Yeah, the way you look at the others, the Western people, how they simplify many of those issues this week. They put the index, they put this, you do it, that, okay. Again, in the same way, we, this is not only your problem, this is a problem in the whole Muslim world, okay. We should try to simplify this way of teaching, you know, to the people. You know. For sure, the one who wants to, to, want to become a scholar, he need to to read those heavy or difficult books, okay? But in the meanwhile, when we have to deliver the knowledge that you got from those, this book to another person, should be too simple, okay? If you are complicated, what is going to say? He's going to say to himself, I make repentance, so I'm, going to, I'm not going to ask this person after that at, at all, okay? Because he kept me for half hour speaking, 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 and I did not know anything. See? This simplicity, you know, is highly needed. May not be needed, you know, for the one who wants to gain knowledge. He should get and try to swim in those difficult, you know, areas, you know, and have his experience with these difficult books, you know, but the story is completely different when you convey it to a student or to someone ask you, you should simplify it, make it as simple as, 
And for sure, since myself and your people, you know, we don't have enough time to educate everyone. We should have some of those uh, booklets, you know, or books, you know, or whatever, that they are quite simple to make people learn how to pray, make people learn how to pay charity, to fast, and you know, you, you got my point? I think we are in real need, you know, in this, of this point, you know, all over the place, of uh, simplicity, you know, of these knowledge. Then, this is maybe looked personal and may not be looked personal to choose the one that we trust. <coughs> this has been practiced in all aspects you know, of knowledge. I'm, not, I'm sorry, Yanni, to give these examples. Yani, uh, example of it, those who study medicine in the U.S., they are going to treat people according to the U.S. way. There are many medications, you know, available in Europe. They don't accept it here in the U.S. And this position is not going to accept it. You got my point. And here, it's not a matter of that I'm right and you are wrong, okay? I trust this. This is the way I know how to do it, okay? Like, so for example, I learned Hnukha Hanafi. This is not to tell you that Hnukha Shafi is really bad, okay? But this is the way I know. Please don't ask me something else. You got my point? Yani here, all of us, firstly, as yourself, you should go by what the one you trust. You are going to find yourself trust many of those scholars, you know, much more than the others. You are going to find yourself trust some of books more than the others. And this is the way you should go by it, because you are good, good at it, you know. But don't let anyone understand, including, including yourself, that you are putting the others down. Okay? And here, all of us, you should find the scholar that you start to trust. You should find the book that you trust. Because this is going to make your life much easier. Okay? i give you an example, you know. I really admire, you know, about Ibn Juzay. Ibn Juzay, not Hanafi. He's Maliki and he's Mashur. Yeah, really, I'm admi I admire the way he put the books, you know. He write in very brief way and very well understood for everyone, okay, which is almost impossible. You got my point? And yeah, here, you may trust, you may feel comfortable, you may get along with some people, you know, much more than the others, for one reason or another. Okay, the other thing that is important, you are here in an environment, great one. What do I mean by it? You are here in Darul Qasim or any other school. That means you are going to meet with colleagues, with you. You should make muzakara. What's the name of muzakara? That you tell that person, what did that, if you are uh, specialized in qiraat, what did that, how did Nafi recite this word? Or what's the rule, if you are in fuqah, what's the rule according to Abu Hanifa at this matter? You are Hanafi. You are going to make muzakara. What's the name of muzakara? To mention these masail all the time with your colleagues, okay? This is, is going to be quite available for you when you work in Dar al-Qasim or school or this or that. But it's going to be much more difficult, you know, if you are... We have in San Francisco some of this area. If you are in San Francisco, you know... The, you will not find anyone to make muzakar. You got my point? Yani here, you are in an environment, make all of your knowledge, you know, well done, you know, by making muzakar with the others. Okay? And this is, I, should, I think we should find a way, you know, of sharing with each other some of these knowledges. You know. This is called muzakar al -Akhran. And this is, has been used, you know, by our setup, you know, by the companion, by the uh, successor and your name and your leader. <coughs> okay. Don't postpone. And who, who, uh, whoever is young, this is good opportunity from, from Allah Subhanahu. Please. And now I experience it. And you are going as long as you get older, you are going to lose many of your qualities and skills. Whatever you are able to do nowadays. Don't postpone it, okay? Today, you have taught people this and that. Don't delay it, because you are going to forget one of, or two of those messages that you need to check, okay? Yani just have a, a habit, 
don't postpone this matter. You may postpone something else, you know, but don't delay this matter. Have them done, you know, quickly. Okay. Then you have al awlawiya priorities. Okay. What the meaning of priorities? That's me. When you, when you don't know how to pray, you should re learn the pokok of prayer before. When do, you don't know how to recite Fatiha, learn how to recite Fatiha. Okay. And this is, as it's applicable for you, it's applicable for you students. You are going to find different type of students in your class. This one, you know, especially the beginner, you know, he doesn't know how to pray. <coughs> The other one is quite familiar with prayer. You are not going to treat them as such, okay? You should concentrate for each one, you know, about that is more important, okay? Give the priorities, okay? Don't waste the time. And if you tell that boy, you know, who doesn't know how to pray, pray about how to perform Hajj. MashaAllah, you are giving him very nice knowledge, okay? But this is not going to be practiced by him after how many years Allah, okay? I give the priorities, okay? Feel the need that I need to give, to deliver to that person this knowledge or that knowledge. There's one, something which is quite important. And in my time, this is my experience. And sometimes I have dark vision. I'm sorry about this, you know. I'm not good man, okay? So, to know the levels, know the time-wise, or we call it in Arabic, tabaqat. Many of people in our time, they don't know tabaqat. In each branch of knowledge or science, you have tabaqat. Ibn Abidin in Fuqah, he mentioned tabaqat al fuqaha Elsewhere, you have in Malik, in the, again, again, they are going to mention their tabaqat, but they are different than Hanafi. Okay? In Hadith, to be honest with you, I just found this knowledge, you know, recently, I don't know how, how accurate it is. Same in Hadith, like in Fuqah, you have Mujtahid, you have Muqallid. Not all those books, you know, that you have in Hadith, they are written by Mujtahid. I give you an example, Tirmizi, I think Tirmizi is not Mujtahid. Why? Because he keep asking Bukhari, asking Abu Zura, asking Darimi about certain hadith, which give me the, the observation that this person is follower, is muqallid. You, you got my point? Yani here, when you have some statement done by Tirmizi and some done by Bukhari, I cannot put them at the same level as persons, not as books. You got my point? Okay, and here it's very important in all aspects of sciences, you know, to know the tabaqat. And from when is derived? First thing, the Quran, right? La istawi minkum man qadar qabl al fatih wa man aman qabl al waqat. Ulaqa azam daraja al Madina. Nasib al. Eh, okay. لا يستوي منكم من أنفق قبل من قبل الفتح وقاتل أولئك أعظم درجة من الذين أنفقوا بعد وقاتل وكل وعد الله. Okay. يعني this is knowledge of liars. Okay. And this is even mentioned by the prophet when two of the people of Badr they have problem between themselves, you know. And some companion who became Muslim later on he want to interfere. The prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said no back off. They are people of Badr and they are. Much more loyal to each other than yourself. Okay? And here you should know it. As we know it for loyalty and for uh, grades in, uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala scale, we should know it about our marriage and teaching. Okay? We don't put them together. Okay. <coughs> then, you should seek knowledge. And those who are accepted by himself. This is different than what I mentioned before, okay? And here, you have something academic, okay? When you look at the, the scholar, he is a, a container of knowledge, but yet, you feed yourself easy 
or feel rest, you know, comfortable with some, not as such with the other, okay? Those who feel comfortable with them, you are going to get much more benefit of them, okay? You may not call your sheikh as the most knowledgeable one, but I'm sorry, I'm, I have gotten the most benefit from that person, okay? And it is uh, the most abuser of them, you know, Sufi. Everyone call his Sheikh Qutb al No, are, my friend, he is not Qutb al but you got most benefit from that person, okay? Here is the same. I'm not denying. You may have in your city or elsewhere, or in the book, some great book, and a book which is less than this one, okay? But you feel yourself, you feel more comfortable with the other one. Okay? <laughs> when I am asked, you know, by some people, how I'm going to memorize Quran, what I tell them, start with these surahs that you feel yourself easy to them, to you, to you, you know, and you are familiar with them, okay? And it's not to give preference or some surahs over the others or making make them, you know, much, no. But this person, per se, out of his experience, he feels himself more relaxed with these surahs. And this is going to be much easier for him to memorize these surahs, you know, and give him the courage to memorize the whole Quran. You got my point? And here in knowledge is the same thing. You may have not that good book, you know, even though it's not going to uh, uh, mention some fake knowledge, you know, or whatever, you know. But start with, this, with that book, you know, and you feel yourself, you know, relaxed with it. And this is as applicable for books, maybe, or surahs, maybe applicable for persons, okay? Again, because, as the Prophet said, الأرواح جنود مجندة فما تعارف منها أتلك وما تناك لبنى أتلك اختلف. Then, I think especially in this country, all of you should be familiar with what we call in Arabic, العلم النقلي والعلم العقلي والعلم التجديد. Science is not only experimental one. In West, education, they tell them that science should be experimental. You are here, correct me if I'm wrong, to teach what religion, right? What is religion? Religion is not experimental science. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say pray, I don't try prayer, you know, if it's good or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them. <coughs> These people, right? He said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ فَإِنَّ صَابَ وَخِيرُ وَتْمَانَ وَيَا صَابَتْ وَتْمَانَ Okay? That they are going to give trial to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them good money or whatever, or be relaxed, oh, this great prayer, you know. If otherwise, it's not good prayer. Okay? And here, you should have this understanding in yourself, and you should deliver to your student, okay? Not all sciences, they are experimental. You have, you have sciences of transmission. When you speak about religion, what is the religion? Religion is the relation between two ones, okay? The first one is Allah, and the other one is humankind. Do you have dominance here? Yes, I have dominance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the dominant one. When you have dominant one, so everything is going to come from that dominant one to you. That means it's a matter of transmission. That's why you have transmission of Quran, you have transmission of uh, prophetic statement, you have transmission of uh, Okay? Yani to start, I'm not telling you to put your intellect aside. No. You may use your intelligence, you may use your intellect to understand the, the, uh, the, the letter, the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And this is, all of us, we should be familiar with this point, especially in this country. Make recognition between what is transmission, what is something is a theory like mass and what is experimental. You have these three types, you know, of knowledge, you know, our sciences, you know, and you should be quite familiar with them. Okay. 
this, this comment was mentioned by Imam Shafi when he said, all knowledges they are in Quran. Why I should convey it to your people? Just to make myself and the others. You should work hard with Quran. Many of those sciences, regardless of your specialty, if you are specialized in Arabic language, or you are specialized in in fuqah or you special in hadith or whatever, as Imam Shafi said, all these sciences they are derived from Quran. But according to the standard of the Prophet, for sure I'm not going to be of that standard, but I should and you should, and many all scholars they should they should strengthen their relation with the Holy Quran regardless of their specialty. Okay, last point is don't be too curious, you know, don't waste a lot of Okay, save your time because you need your time for many more uh, respected matters. You know, I'm going to stop here. You know, sorry if I make the short story long. You know, but uh, now we have Sayyid Omar. Sayyid Omar. No, it's not really very So this is uh, we have time for uh, question and answer. So please do uh, ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. Sheikh, I want to ask a question about this non issue. So, if you know somebody asks you a question and you might not have the best intention. <coughs> uh, no, I did not say best intention. When you have a person has something in his mind. And you want to use your piece of information to save whatever in his mind, which is quite wrong, okay? You shouldn't give him that. Okay? How can that be knowledge? You should hide. You should hide. As Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam said, when you give the knowledge to the one who is not eligible, like when you put the diamond in a big, okay? You should hide the knowledge whenever it's needed to hide it. And this mentioned in Bukhari. Sayyidina Abu Huraira, he said, أخذت عن رسول الله وعائن من العين أما الأول فبسسته بين الناس وما الآخر فلو بسسته لقطع من هذا البلعوب. Okay? And that means he received two containers of knowledge from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He spread one of them and he hid the other one. You should hide. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did hide some of the knowledge. A Bedouin person came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Oh Rasulullah. I say, Oh Allah, make me go to heaven, you know, and save me from hellfire. But Ya Rasulullah, I don't understand your dandana and the dandana of Mu'az ibn Jabal. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hawlaha no dandana. He did not explain to him this dandana. Okay? I hope I have some explanation of this dandana. But still Bedouin. <laughs> Uh, how do you know when you become a specialist in a fun or in a subject? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps either I missed this point, you know, or it, uh, it was one of the notes and, and they did not explain it very well. Okay. Like among your pe people, you know, and about your students, you are going to find different skills. Some of you or your students, they are going to be quite great, you know, in memorizing. The others may not be as such, but they have good way of analyzing. <coughs> I think yours, yourself and the, the, the student, they should be directed toward what they are specialized at. When you find a person who is good in memory, you uh, Direct him toward memorizing the Quran or the prophetic statement. When you have a person good in analysis, you know, you should direct him toward him. Okay? So, uh, uh, the other thing, you know, to, uh, to know is how do you feel yourself comfortable about these sciences? You know, all of us, we are not going to find ourselves, you know, find ourselves 
that we are equal you know, about this knowledge, you know, when we read Sirah or read Quran or read this or that, okay? And this is a good way, you know, even for the person himself to decide what specialty he wants to take, you know. It's not a matter of availability, it's a matter of love. Whatever you love a lot, you know, you are going to be good, you know, at this, you know. Whatever you take it just because out of duty or not, not no one available, you are not going to be as such. What are the essentials that every science and every scholar should know? This is a very broad question. Hopefully, yani the way I put it, you know, for tomorrow's session, to give some of the common look, you know, or essentials, you know, of that knowledge. This may be considered as a seed, you know, to build up on it, you know, for any of these knowledge. <coughs> That is broad question. And the, the program tomorrow, the Kuntu Luba and Yusuf. This is the Lord Alabi and Alabi. Assalamu alaikum. 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 الحنفية والمالكية والحنابلة نعم عند الشافعية أخذوا بقول الإمام النووي إنه فقط بالقراءات السبع يعني القراءات الثلاثة المتمة من العشر لا يمكن أن يصلي بها عند الشافعية فقط لكن عند الحنفية والمالكية والحنابلة يصح جزاكم الله خير طيب. السودان أنتم مالكية؟ نعم أنا مالكي أهلا وسهلا لكن أنا درست حنفية إيه ماذا درست؟ نعم أنه يجوز أم لا يجوز؟ والله أنا يعني كذلك يعني لا هو منصوص عليه في الفقه الحنفي والمالكي أنه يجوز بالقراءة العشر نعم جزاك الله Please excuse me. I guess since the questions have, uh, for the topic have died down a little bit, you mentioned two masail that I'm kind of interested in hearing from you about. One is regarding the, the rasul being tawqifi. Uh, I would appreciate hearing your tahdiq about that from the point of view of the Quran. And the second is you mentioned about the iqlab and keeping your lips open or closed while, while making the iqlab. I also appreciate hearing uh, what your tahdiq on this issue. Okay. If you don't have any more questions, you know, I. I'm happy to answer this because I look at them as specialized questions, you know. So I give preference for the other questions about the lecture. If anyone have a question about the lecture, let, let us answer it before this question. Otherwise, I'll answer them. Inshallah, bihawlillahi wa huwa. Okay. For the first point, al rasmu tawqifi you see there is ijma' among the qurra about maqtu' al mawsul what do I mean? When you, you have fima or mimma or big sama or whatever, all qurra they said, whenever it's written, attach, you cannot stop on fi without ma. Whenever it's detached, you may say fi and then say ma. Okay, this what does it tell me? It tells me that the way the Qur'an was written, in that aspect of Mawsul and Maqtur, you have ijma' from the Qur'an that you should go according to. Even though linguistically, by the Arabic language, doesn't make any difference, okay? So here I look at it as ijma' from Qur'an. I'm not here to say there's no difference in opinion. You have difference in opinion about the person, but not among the Qur'an outside. That's why, for me, I look at it as consensus, okay? Why it is consensus? Because those who are specialized in Rasm al-Qur'an and in Qira'at, 
they all of them they have ijma. Yani to make to make it more clear, if, if you are familiar with Jazariya, you go back. You have certain chapters speaking about maktu and mausul, and this is to be practiced for all Qurra without exception. Okay. For the second question, for Ikhfa al Shafawi, in Qira'a or in Tajweed. This is my look, I may be right or wrong. Whenever you have end before the Prophet this is not accurate. I can't tell you who, has, who is the first one to start to say which means we have an end. Whereas, can you tell me who was the first one to say you don't have this, okay, to the best of my English. Correct me if I'm wrong, okay, which means this came from the Prophet, okay? And I have many other ways, you know, to tell about it, you know. If you want me, this has been mentioned thoroughly by Ibn Ghalbun, by Abu Amr al-Dani, and by Ibn Jazari, that we are going to, if they said, in Tibaq al-Shafadani. If you are interested, I'm going to show, that, show you this text, you know, in the book of Ibn Ghalbun, Book of Abu Amr al-Dani and Book of Ibn Jazal. To my knowledge, you know, after these three major masters, you know, in Quran, if you fill this hall, you know, and uh, ten times larger than it, you know, with people telling me, no, it's inaccurate, I'm not going to believe it, okay? Yani, even though I am, I sound to myself, you know, a little bit flexible, you know, but in some areas I'm too rigid, okay? So I'm not going to believe that. What's the correct way to do a little To say, yeah. look at me, tell me him be. No. Tell me him be. Yeah, what's the problem? Don't say, tell me him, okay? Don't apply force to it, okay? Make it easy. Tell me him be. But to have a gap, it's completely wrong to say, tell me him be. I'm sorry about this question. So, uh, the same question is about the Jewish. We have Ikhfa. Could you please uh, also, the Ikhfa itself. Okay. Why, why it's called Ikhfa principle? And then, how I can say, for example, in Kurtu? Or any ikhfa? Okay. No, go <coughs> ahead. First, the ikhfa, as in many books mentioned, it's a, an intermediate stage between idgham and izhar, right? You know it physically why? Because you see the throat letters, all of them, they are izhar. Okay? Those letters are next to noon, they are idgham. Those letters, they are intermediate, intermediate, they are ikhfa, right? And they said even, this ikhfa is going to be much closer to idgham whenever you are close to the noon, and much closer to idgham whenever you are part of the noon, okay? By this statement, that in ikhfa, you should have two components. One comes from the mouth, and one comes from the nose. What comes from the nose is common, which is what? Gunna. Mm. Okay. What comes from the mouth is completely different because the position of the mouth should be close or near that letter. This is the definition of akhba. So here you say in kuntum. Again, we have many people nowadays they say kuntum. The tongue is going to be way away from the ta. Is this akhfa? No. You should about touch. You don't touch, but you should be about to touch the tongue, you know, with the, you say, in kuntum. Sheikh Amin just asked to give a summary of the, of the Sheikh session and um, some words of reflection on that. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa
So just a quick rundown of some of the main points the Sheikh spoke about and referred to this evening. One was the issue of Mahaqqa and the issue of Tahqiq. And mashallah, when reading books and reading texts, uh, I myself have experienced much misinformation by texts and um, by individuals saying, oh, this madhab says this, this madhab says that. And when you look, it's actually, and you do research, you actually find out it's the opposite. Or, and, and so this creates a lot of confusion in the Muslim community itself. And so the issue of doing tahqiq, we should you know, take it very seriously in order to avoid misinformation. And especially when um, one person who's of a particular madhab or school of law speaks about another madhab and without having training or without knowing how a madhab works. Um, the other issue to speak to the Sheikh spoke about, I'm just going to give, not speak about every issue, but uh, in saw the issue of being fair and, and, and uh, honest when speaking about other madhabs as well and other individuals and scholars. Um, many times generalizations are made and uh, those generalizations usually are incorrect. And so, and I was careful not to make a generalization about the generalization. So, uh, so that's important to, to keep that in mind is that we, um, when we go off of describing other individuals and their opinions and their, what the school of law and does it have weight, does it have not, does his opinion support it versus his opinion not, just because it's not familiar to you or it's not something your shakes have practiced, we should, uh, and it's um, maybe some other groups of, uh, scholars have put into practice or is from them, we should have in thought when um, dealing with other people's um, opinions and their positions. Um, I'd like to just kind of end, basically, I had the experience of reading with a, reading with a particular sheikh uh, this summer, and uh, last summer, and so it was a very interesting experience that when we're reading a particular text, he himself wrote his own hashia on this text. So we're reading the text with the commentary and the hashia on it, and um, he was very, uh, what, what I, uh, he was very, whenever he was reading, he would always read and then he would stop and then he would ask, does this make sense? Not does this make sense, do you understand it? Rather, does the position, is what the scholar or the commentator saying, does it really make sense? And he would often, often disagree with the commentators. And some of the commentators was the Sawi, you know, if you're in the mouth, you know who they are. Um, and, you know, some pretty, these are big names, right, of great scholars. And he would disagree with them. This doesn't make sense. Rather I say this, or I say that, or he would give his argument. And then he'd look at me and say, well, what do you think? And I just, whatever you say, Sheikh. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and after, you know, it was pretty grueling. I was very nervous reading in front of him because, you know, it's more than just, about it, just translating the text, it's, you're engaging in the material. So after we finished reading, he kind of laughed at me, and he was like, so what do you think of this whole experience? He kind of knew. And he actually described his experience as, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, right? where you read, it, it's not, you know, and you're, you're critically reading the text, and you're critically engaging in the science. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Sheikh, but I think that's kind of, the idea here is that when we're reading, we're not just concerned about what, you know, uh, that when we read and we say, well, what is the author saying? Oftentimes, what's not expected, we just merely translate what the author is saying. Translating into English what an author is saying doesn't mean you understand what the author is saying. And does it really mean, and so the question is, you're translating those words, but are you really understanding the masada? What is the issue being discussed and why? Why is this issue even being discussed in this book? And so um, this is a very rich experience, and I think it reminded when I was listening to the shift tonight, it really reminded me of, of that, and I would just thought, inshallah, to share that. And um, alhamdulillah, I was blessed to have the shift with us a lot of love. Thank you, Sheikh, for allowing for this shift. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you, Sheikh.
سبحانك يا ربنا لا نعصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أنت على نفسك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك أفضل الصلاة وأدوم الدين على الأولين والآخرين وعلى السابقين وقائد الغرب المحجلين وسيد ولد آدم أجمعين الله على صلواتك ورحمتك وبركاتك على سيد المسلمين ومن المتقين وخاتم النبيين سيدنا محمد عبدك ورسولك إمام الخير وقائد الخير ورسول الرحمة اللهم بعثه مقاما يربط به الأو مقاما محمودا يربط به الأولون والآخرون وأنزل عندك المقعد المقرب من مقيم يا رب العالمين وجزيه عنا بما هو أهله اللهم إنا نسألك الخير ما سألك من عبدك ونبيك سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعادك من عبدك ونبيك سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليهم قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليهم قول أو عمل اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وقلبا خاشعا ولسانا ذاكرا وشفاء من كل داء اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وفقينا إذا علمتنا اللهم انفعنا ورفعنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا نورا وإماما وهدى ورحمة اللهم أصلح أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم فرج الكرب عن أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اجمع على الهدى أمر أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر لأمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رحمة عامة اللهم أعز أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انصر أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اجبر أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أغث أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم يا من لطفت في خلق السماوات والأرض ولطفت من الجنة في بطول أماتها الطف بنا وبسائر المسلمين في قضائك وقدرك اللطف يليق بكرمك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا ذا اجتماع مرحوما وتفرقنا بعد تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا منا ولا معنا ولا إلينا سلك شقيا ولا مطرودا ولا محروما برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أسمعنا خيرا وأكرعنا خيرا ورزقنا الله العافية ودام علينا ودام الله قلوبنا على التقوى ووفقنا لما يحبه ويرضاه ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملت أو على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقت لنا وعفو عنا واغفر لنا محمد أنت مولانا فانصرنا على قوم الكافرين اللهم عطف علينا قلب حبيبك العظم سيدنا مولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارزقنا زيارة بشفاعة في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم تبت خلوبنا على محبته واستعمدنا بسنته ونوي طرفنا بطلعته وتعفنا على بنته واحشرنا في زمرته ولا تحل بيننا وبينه واسقنا بيدي الشريفة شربة هنيئة بريئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا يا رب العالمين وجعلنا من أولى الناس لي وقرب من منزلة واغفر لهم لنا ولوالدينا ولمشايخنا ولمن له حق علينا ولسائل المسلمين أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا بجاه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وكتبه